Hello everybody, Life Brawler here is once again, and we're back again with more streaming shenanigans. But we're finally in the spooky month, and I decided, you know what? Spooky month, but romance. We're actually playing uh, Hooked on You, which is a Dead by Daylight dating sim, where we get to be paired up with one of four killers from the Dead by Daylight uh, game, and uh, have some very nice romantic at times uh, and stuff. My name's Light Brawler, and I will actually be enjoying this entire uh, shenanigans. Uh, so it hasn't been a while since I've played uh, the base Dead by Daylight. I just haven't really been like interested, even though that there's the new uh, Resident Evil chapter with Wesker as the new killer and a couple of other characters and stuff like that, like uh, Rebecca Chambers and Ada Wong, which that would be fun to do. Maybe like another time. Uh, if I feel like wanting to set up multiplayer stuff again, but we're actually gonna focus on, you know, a little bit of beach time fun, even though it's the summer's over and now it's fall, but you know what? It's Halloween! Halloween's coming around the corner, so we actually should, uh, get ourselves into the season with all these uh, lovely singles that are lo hot local singles that are waiting for you to date. So, we're gonna actually start a new game. Welcome to your dream vacation. Before you get started, uh, what should we call you? I guess we'll just have my name. Just... Click on the thing. I have to switch between. No, can I not? Weird. Hmm, that's weird. Can I not, like, enter my name anywhere? Maybe I just need to disable the, uh... Yeah, I guess I can't really do anything with the, the PS4 controller this time around. Because I tend to like using the PS4 controller for, uh... A lot of the games that I play, so... It... It's pretty much uh, just something to be a little bit more helpful, but I guess we're stuck with mouse. Anyway, let's go. Adventure. <laughs> you wake up on the beach soaking wet, salt water stinging inside of your throat as if you'd nearly drowned. Water falls from your mouth as you open to gasp it for air. You have no memory of how you got here. In fact, you can only remember your own name, but not where you came from or a single fact about your life. That sucks. What you do know is that despite the outrageous beauty of the landscape around you, you feel incredibly sick to your stomach. <laughs> wow. Really went down the wrong pipe, huh? You need a minute or can I go on? Because I can give you a minute, we've got plenty of time. Endless time, really. An eternity, if you catch my drift. Whoa, not now, Ocean. Sorry, may I continue? Please, go on. Okay, then. As I was... <laughs> As I was saying! You look down at your feet, ankle-deep in the crystal blue water of a newly arrived wave. As the water recedes back into the ocean, it reveals a grotesque discovery. A decomposing face stares up at you from beneath the sand. All you can do is vomit a stream of dark bile, bugs, worms, and other... Ugh. Questions race through your mind. Where are you? How did you get here? Who is behind this incredibly charming and well-spoken voice in your head? However, answers don't come easy. Your mind is completely blank. What will you do? <laughs> run, close your eyes, dig up that face. Let's just run for it. You turn away from this wretched sight and begin to run. But the beach is endless. Despite how far you run, you get nowhere. It is us that you start stop and look behind you. Your footsteps are erased by the stop. You turn in considering your lack of options. You've got no choice but to walk into the brush. However, the beauty of the beach is not shared by the darkness of the palmy woods before you. There's nothing inviting about that shadowy forest. Terror freezes you in your steps. Why are you trying to run away? 
This is paradise. You're here to enjoy yourself, don't you know? Have a little bit of fun. Take charge of your own experience. Well, that was sure weird, that voice again. Do oceans normally talk? Your memory isn't right, but you're pretty sure you remember le learning as a child that oceans do not speak directly to people in spooky terms. Your mind doesn't have a chance to linger any longer of your current situation as you feel something soft bump into your foot. When you look down, you find a volleyball sitting in the sand next to you. You stare down, frozen. A voice calls out from behind you. Uh, little help, please? You turn around, and when you see what's waiting for you, your just, jaw just about to hit the ground. Ah, Miss Huntress. There's our hot local singles looking to, uh, mingle. Four gorgeous monsters stand halfway between you and a well-tended volleyball court. Each of them oozes with undead energy, a magical aura reaching out and penetrating you. Via your eyes! Your heart begins to race. Curiosity? Fear? Desire? You can't help but stare at these casually dressed, uh, let's call them killers. I don't know, not to be judgmental, but that's just the energy they put out here. So many competing feelings rush through your mind at once that you are completely paralyzed. Hello? There are weird days, and then there's all this. All you can do is look back at the ball, look down at the ball, back up at those monstrous lineup, well, literal monsters. Sexy ass monsters, though. What do you do? Let's just toss it back. You bend down and grab the, it's warm from sitting in the stand on this beautiful day. When you give the ball a toss, it arcs beautifully through the air and lands into Huntress's hands. Not bad, stranger! Huntress's muscles rip her, ripple as she grips it in her hand. You look up her down and consider that she might be held tightly in the strong arms. Warm crouch may be a little sweaty, but that's okay, it's natural. Try hard. What? They're speaking directly to you, but you still can't bring yourself to reply. You're in France. When you step out of it, you realize everyone has gone back to the volleyball court. Alone again, you look across the beach at the strange residents who casually bat a volleyball back and forth, happily ignoring your intrusion onto their private beach. Should you be frightened, worried, excited? I'd prefer them as killers, not to give them too much away. But at the same time, damn. They are looking very appealing in their own way, and nobody so much as lifted a blood-soaked finger in your direction. Don't be scared. You were made for this. Well, geez, if the spooky ocean voice says not to be scared, I'm sure it's all going to work out. With no good reason not to, you decide to head over and see what happens next. It seems like you've derailed the volleyball game just by showing up. You derailed the game just by showing up, Nitwit! And I guess you're also a Nitwit. Look, it's best to just go with what Trapper says when he says it. That's a policy I hold for pretty much anyone who always seems to have fresh blood on their hands. Hey, don't worry all about it. It's all just a game. Existence, that is. Besides, you seem a lot more interesting than a silly game. What's your deal? What brings you here? You mean they had to do more than distract from my total domination? That was Rafe. That sign means he was done with the game, too. Either that or he saw a butterfly or something. Look, I don't care why the slack-jawed moron is here. I just want to know, can I kill them or not? You know you can't. At least, not yet. Oh yeah, not yet. Hey, you might want to know, uh, say something. Actually, never mind. There'll be plenty of that time soon enough. Right now, this group has some questions for you. Be warned. Answer quickly and answer well. This is a timed quiz, and it will be very important later. Very important. Or not important in any way whatsoever. Probably that one. I can't remember. How attractive would you say you are? Very not at all or average. I'm pretty average, I think. Just another face in the crowd. Another normal life in an endless cycle. I think you're quite cute myself, like a chipmunk or a grizzly bear. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? 
strength would be cool. Strength isn't all about muscles. True strength is up here. You expect Trapper to point, but instead he taps one of his bulging shoulders. And specifically in these muscles, no one gives a shit about your talents. What was your best subject in school? History? Nice. It's important to know where we came from so that way we're not going to repeat humanity's mistakes. We will always. Anyways, but still. What's your favorite animal? Dog, cat, or mucilid? Dog? You look absolutely adorable in little puppy masks. What's your favorite color? Blue blush red three day old corpse. Blue. Blue isn't good for productivity, it makes people want to be lazy. What's your dream job? <laughs> Astronaut not working at all! If if we get to do what we really want, why work at all? It takes a lot of courage to break free from society's expectations to climb the ladder. Oh, if she could spend lazy, this is some, some grand crusade. These damned millennials. The best flavor of ice cream. Eh. Chocolate. My favorite flavor is pain. Same. Same here. Mine is vanilla. Swirled with pain. I think mint chip is the greatest flavor I ever conceived myself, but enough about ice cream, am I right? Hold on a second. That reminds me. I am right. Always. It's a, it, it, always. It's a lesson for you. You should learn before we help go to do what I say if you want to survive. Pit with chip. We're teaching lessons now and there. You rest. Kill or be killed is the rule on this island. Even if for faceless voices. Tell me what's the best flavor of ice cream. Because I feel like if... Because I've seen this before. If we don't pick mint chip, we're going to get killed. The best flavor is mint chip. So, I think you're gonna be just fine. Anywho, now that I know so much more about you, I'm sure the group wants to start getting to know that. I'm Trapper. I pretty much run the things around here. I'm the smartest, richest, strongest person on this whole island. I don't like losers. If you want to know who, what a loser is, say hello to Ray. Hi, I'm Ray. I'm nothing like everyone else. I like nice people and I love big dumb idiots. What's up? I'm spirit. I don't like most things. I don't really hate most things either. It's not worth my time. But the things I do hate, I really hate. You know? Based on my personal observations, life is nothing but suffering. And society is a carefully calculated lie to keep everyone subserving it to those in power. It's better to choose just to not take part. Jesus, like she was downright murdered by society. She hates it so much. Oh no, wait, I run a spirit story now, and that's almost exactly what happened. Hey, I'm Huntress. Don't let those bummers get you down. There's a lot of fun to be had on this island, along with lots of love. Yeah, there is, if you know what I mean. Grow up. Grow a body. I've explained this a thousand times. I'm dead, but I'm not a literal ghost. I just create a trail of fog. I'm not me. Whatever, fog body. That's not nice. He's not nice. You love it? Only sometimes. Ew, really? That's disgusting. That's why she likes it. Don't speak for me. I also hate it. Stop speaking entirely, actually. For the first time ever, I agree with Wraith. Let's move on. Otherwise, we'll do this all day. Besides, if I know this crew, and I do, they'll want to show off soon enough. If we're done playing, let's do something else instead. Wow. For once, I actually agree with the meathead. I say we go to my yacht. It's the massive boat dock nearby. I'll give everyone a taste of true luxury and power. Wraith throws his eyes. Uh, don't mind him. He just hates fun happiness. No, I hate the endless, desperate, soul-crushing pursuit of wealth. The way it slaunted needlessly and the cruelty it engenders. What about hanging out by the pool? I find the water common, simple, beautiful. Hey, what about our volleyball game? We can exercise and have some fun as a group. Are you all serious? There's a perfectly good lounge to chill out at right here. I'm tired.
tired. And Emma says, I hate being in the sun. Where do you want to go? I'd be down for a dip in the pool. Whoa, the pool. You, you actually want to go to the pool? I, uh, well, I mean, sure, why not? I've got good ideas. What's wrong with my ideas? The pool is great. Everyone knows that. All over the world. If people want to go it's that pools are great. Look, we've got a whole ocean right here, and they still put in a pool because pools are just, well, you know, great. It's a really special treat. And you thought it was bad when he stayed quiet. Hold on. For just one moment. This is Dwight and Claudette, our activities coordinators. They're also the cooks, waiters, bartenders, janitors, and every other job. They're the only help remaining on the island. This place we call Murderer's Island. Huge dramatic nerve musical flourish. None of the others survived. <laughs> survived the interview process, I mean. Hence why we shall here to them refer to them as survivors with a capital S. These two have worked here for a long time. So very long, I don't actually know how long it's been. Sorry, anyway, I should probably let White and Claudette do their main day jobs. They sure look happy, but they're vibrating with a nervous energy that is starting to give me the creeps. We will now escort the group to the venue of your choosing. However, in the future, we recommend waiting for us to present, present your options whenever possible, and don't run to various activities unsupervised. We don't have much autonomy around here. The least you can do is allow us to do our job. The most you can do is to help us count as I- Dwight! Yes, pardon me. Please follow us. Hey, narrator! Yes, something I can help you with? Those two, Claudette and Dwight. Did they just mention something about wanting to escape? Is escape an option? Should I be trying to escape? Also, hey, Retro Foxhound. I'm in dialogue uh, hell because I gotta do this all the voices. Escape? Them? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I think you're mistaken. It seems like Dwight was asking for help to get off this island, though. Oh, right. That. Yes, that was true. He was. But he just meant that he wants to get off to the vacation island getaway a couple of miles south of here. It has much fancier combinations than this island. It's one of those big corporate outfits, quite exclusive, where all the famous celebrities hang out. Very luxurious. Doesn't quite have all the charm that this island has, though. Trust me, you wouldn't want to go there. With all that money comes a lot of restrictions. This is where you belong. Now, now, off you go. It's time for an activity. On this island, your decisions matter, mostly, when I agree with them, not like that other island. So, what'll it be? Well, we... So, this was the pool. This looks like... This would be, like, I guess the yacht. Let's... Maybe it's the volleyball court. Let's go this way. Wow, it's so exciting to have someone into athletics and spirit and wait for so boring. And Trapper is so predictable, relying on brute strength to win games. He has no respect at, at all for grace and skill. Thank goodness you didn't choose the yacht. What kind of person wants to be a sitting duck in the middle of the ocean? You're just asking for a sneak attack from an elk. Wondered how long it would take for her to bring up an elk attack. Game starting up again. Make sure you're watching close. She's really something, huh? Elk don't swim. Live in the forest long enough and you'll see an elk swim. Believe you me. Cheer for me, cute stuff. The killers resume their place on the volleyball court and resume the match they were playing before you arrived. Hey! Fancy a lemonade? I see you working up a thirst eyeing those bouncing buns playing volleyball. Claudette hands you a lemonade. Ooh, so fresh. So tart. She leans in and whispers in your ear. Would you bet on to win? Who's the MVP of your little heart? You're nervous. You don't want any of these killers to hear you talking about them, or not talking about them, if they're into that sort of thing. Just pick someone, please. It's not like we got all day, night, week, month, year, lifetime, eternity, or anything. What's that in that guy's shorts? Sheesh. Okay, I think, um... We'll just, we'll just go with the standard for now with, uh, Huntress. Huntress? 
Oh, shoot! <laughs> oh, shoot! Huntress overheard you. Aw, you got your eye on me? I'm flattered you think I'm good on Honestly, I'm a little annoyed that I've been, I've been so flashy with my moves. Usually, I'm so sneaky that you could barely see me at all. Huntress is totally kicking my butt. Correct answer. I'm allowed to support the other people on the island, right? Oh, jeez. I have no idea what the rules are here. Are there even rules? I should have stayed in my secret little... Larry. My secret Larry. Wow. What a game. It's a tie. Can there even be a tie in volleyball? No one knows since this is everyone's first time playing. These killers don't usually have time for a team sports amid their busy schedule of brutally tearing survivors to shred. Hey, is Claudette crying? Are you okay, Claudette? Probably just shedding a tear for her lost fellow survivors. You know, this resort had four employees wanted to open. It's nothing, I'm totally fine. Whatever you say, boss. Oh look, the killers have dispersed and are all cooling down in their own way. Spirit is reading the novel, Trapper is stretching sensually between chainsaw curls, Wraith is standing on the beach desperately hoping that the sand will swallow him up, and Huntress is doing some target practice with her bloodied hatchet. You feel a nudge. Dwight is looking at you expectantly. You should really make a move. Life is short. Could get snuffed out any time of day. Carpe diem. Carpe piem. Carpe now. Um, go ahead. Chat one of them up. So which killer has caught your eye? You head over to Huntress. After all, this whole sporty hangout thing was her idea. Might as well see how she's doing. You were really great out there. Where'd you learn to move like that? Whose moves? My moves? These moves? They're nothing. Huntress blushes a bit beneath from her mask. It's cute on cute, if you ask me. Sometimes you gotta look past some bloodstains. A lot of men have run from the lives in my presence. You really learn about what the human body is capable of in these types of scenarios. I love to exercise in a way we're all running for our lives when we keep in shape. I guess I've never thought of fitness that way. Maybe it's time to start. You never know who's coming for you through the brush as fast as they can. Propelled by, forward by hunger, desperation, or just plain old boredom. Uh, it doesn't seem like boredom is going to be your problem, surrounded by all these characters on characters. Survival, on the other hand? You're going to need to compensate for your lack of a killer instinct. What's your style? I might not be strong, but I'm tough, you know what I mean? Like, Chewy? She did not seem to know what you mean. Like, ready for anything, to do what it takes to survive. Oh, sure, like hold your enemy's head down in the river until the shouting stops and the rushing water takes his life away with it. Maybe not anything, but I'm ready for a lot of things. Get ready to impress, because we're just getting started. Come on, everyone, the fun and games can't be over already. I get it, I get it. Volleyball? Not real snug. Look at us. We crave action. We crave excitement. We crave the thrill of the hunt. It's time to see if our friend here has the hunter's instinct. I saw you serving me like prey on the volleyball court. Huntress waves a bloody accent in your and you step back nervously before you realize she's not waving at you, she's handing it to you. Don't worry, I got several ways. It's important to hone your skills, especially when you're in a new place where there's many threats that may lurk around every corner. You need to make sure that you are the biggest threat of all. Just don't aim those things at me. You can't even see me. Many games consist of two parts. One on top, a pointer which rotates in a clockwise direction. And on the bottom, a target you're going to be pointing at. Sometimes the target is immediately visible. Sometimes it's hidden until the pointer arrives. Press the space bar to stop the pointer and while the target is to win. Fail to land the target and you will lose. To achieve perfect success, land on the start area of the target, not at the end. Okay, ready to play, or would you like for me to repeat that? Ready! Away we go! Show them what you got! Ah, too early. You missed completely. Perfect! Oh god, it's getting faster. Perfect! You missed completely. Oh my god, why is it getting faster? I'm impressed. A worthy opponent. 
I mean, could have been better, but who's keeping score? For the record, I am, and you got four points. Gotcha, Thoroy. Cool, I guess. I like my stabbing to be a bit more up close and personal. Somewhere loud horn blows and the survivors snap into action. Time's up! You heard him! Get to the next activity! Seems like the X activity is mealtime? A oh, quaint. You were expecting what? Capture the flag? Do you know how complicated it is to run a game like that? Much more so than sitting and talking? You arrive at the cookout where to find an assortment of picnic tables scattered around. What? Oh, did I just go back? What were you expecting? Some kind of round hall with a banquet table? This ain't some prestigious fantasy epic like you find on cable. White and Claudette usher to your seat, but there's very limited seating you're directly around you. And oh, great, terrific. It seems that everybody wants to sit next to you. Even better is that they don't want to sit next to certain people, other people either. To start, no one wants to sit next to Trapper. Meanwhile, he refuses to sit next to Wraith or Trickster. Oh yeah, Trickster's here. Surprise? Yeah, well, they don't call him, uh, expected stir? I'm sorry, even I get nervous around crowds of killers, and my whole shit gets a little flustered. Hey there, you're looking good. Real good. And we literally can't Huntress and Trapper sit together. No, seriously, their arms are too big. They can't fit the table if they sit side by side. Look at this, we can't fit everyone's screen at the same time. You probably think it was an error, but no, it was completely intentional. Let this be a lesson to you. Every error you think you see is a choice. Got that? Okay, Dwight and Claudette are directing traffic. You sit on one side, the rest of them sit opposite you. Huntress and Trapper can't sit at their ends with their enormous sexy arms. Now that everyone is seated, we can begin dinner. Tonight's meal was prepared slowly and carefully with both love and hate for 12 hours over a spit. We hope you all enjoy. We really, really hope you do. Hey, you didn't actually tell us what we're serving. What what are we eating? It's meat! Seasoned with a specific number of special herbs and spices that we simply can't divulge. My favorite! Meat's good. Meat is murder. Which, you know, considering what you've been up to, who are you to get judgy? I'm just... I'm just sharing facts. And you need to murder something to eat its meat, so that's like technically true. Technically true is the best kind of true. Okay, enough yapping. Let's eat. Hey, you think of what I'm thinking? It's gonna be a personal nut spit, right? Or several parts of overlapping people, perhaps. I haven't seen many pigs wearing palm tree button-down prints, you know? When you look closely at the spit, you spot what you definitely appears to be scraps of fabric sandwiched between some layers of meat. Ugh. I think I might be sick. Is there anything else to eat? This took 12 hours. And we do this literally everything on the side. Actually, there's one thing you're not doing today. You're not carving up this delectable meal. Wow, he's right for chains, because I am with a broad axe. It's the perfect tool for easily chopping anything in twain. First, who says twain? Sometimes I swear we're all from completely different historical areas. Second, I'll handle this with my cleaver. Fast, powerful, and clean. At least it's clean when the meat is cold. No blood. Ah, uh, you two and your ridiculous bicep swing contest. And not throw up. Obviously, my gorgeous katana is the only option. Ah, uh, the hell it is. Oh, I'll show you both my katana and send you to actual hell if you like. Please stop. Please, I hate when we fight or talk or even when we look at each other in the eye. I can do it. I have the skull of Azeroth. Great! Instead of slicing it up, you can club it to a second death. Hey, I know this isn't what you want to eat, but uh, hurry up and volunteer to carve up Felix. I mean dinner. Otherwise, this will go on for hours. No hyperbole. They once argued who had the most effective weapons for 72 straight hours. And it doesn't matter which one does it. When they're done talk, they will take even longer to clean their weapon. All while explaining the value of maintaining your tools. Despite being a bunch of cold-blooded killers, for some reason, they're always terrified of tetanus. Hey, why don't you just let me carve up dinner? 
Splendid idea. We didn't hate for it to get cold. He hated it when it got cold. Here's a machete, freshly sharpened. Oh boy, another minigame. Good. I'd like to see what you could do with a less clumsy weapon. Yeah, I said it. Machetes are dumb. Dinner is freshly served. For real. The sounds, especially coming from the mass killers while they eat, which involves lifting their masks and shoving food up behind them, are nasty. Spirit, meanwhile, doesn't even eat. She's the only one who seems to be really embracing being dead. They're all dead, right? This is obviously hell. I mean... Come on, we're still trying to be mysterious here. You think mystery comes easy? Claudette and Dwight are the only ones working their asses off to make this night perfect. Well, at least they're lifting their masks. This is only 99% as disgusting as it could be if they just tried to mash stuff through there. Spirit, why aren't you hungry? The two best things about being dead is not having to eat. That's only one thing. Think about it. Number two. It's no number two. One less thing to think about in the afterlife. Even if I wanted to eat, I have no idea what would actually follow. You might have noticed, but I'm mostly just a member of disembodied body parts floating in a spectral form. Do you see how this deep cut on my abdomen is? I don't think my digestive tract connects anymore. Uh, between the food and the behavior of the group, this might be the worst meal in history. But even worse is that they're staring at you. You're not eating it. They don't like that. I think they want an explanation of why. What do you want to tell them? Actually, it's not the food or the company. I'm just super self-conscious about how I look when I eat. I was just pretending to be gristled, so I'd have an excuse to chew in front of them. Sorry if I made things awkward. I'm actually extremely hungry. Yeah, watching people eat is gross, but try to relax and not worry what everyone else thinks. It's so important to remember people are watching you, judging you, definitely not ignoring you, right guys? Right? Guys? Is anyone listening to me? Typically, a group that includes one, if not more, with meat juice dripping from their chins would be quite scary. However, right now you've barely been able to, let alone get scared and run away. I'm not a narrator, not, I'm a narrator, not a physician, so please don't take this as medical advice, but I'm pretty sure you need to eat to stay alive. Oh hey, it's me again. Your friend, mentor, and guide. Narrator to the narrator. The ocean. Not sure how I feel about that characterization, but I'll allow it. I brought you here, and I might be the only one who can help you now. There's only one thing you must... You have to figure out why you're really here. No one can tell you, not unless you follow the right path. Or at least a right path. There's too many of those to count. Hopefully you pick at least one of them. But there's even more wrong paths. Many of them lead to your demise. Others lead to something even much worse. Starting scenes over and having to fast forward to back where you were, if you're right. But this place holds many secrets, even from itself. But the one that truly matters can be learned if you answer the most important question. Why are you here? Why are you here? Answer that and you'll learn the truth. The ultimate truth. Vague, mysterious. I gotta give it up to this ocean character. That's some quite quality early game storytelling. You wake up to find Huntress holding your limp body, gingerly pulling cool water into your mouth. Oh, good, you're okay. Sometimes when I try to care for people, they have a way of ending up uh, less alive than I when I started. Which would be a total bummer if that happened to you. It's been so long since I had a normal, happy, healthy living person around. Usually, I'm just falling into the same old routine as smashing everyone's heads with a hatchet before I really get to know who they are as a person. But you? You're not nearly as scared or too busy writhing in pain to see me for me. You feel nervous in your arms, not because they're maybe crushing you a little bit, but because she's... Beautiful. Yes, beautiful, but I was just gonna narrate that fact, but not, you know, say it out loud as a single person like some creep. Beautiful. Mask! 
your bunny mess. It's quite gorgeous. A nice recovery, but now that you're awake and talking, you gotta keep this up. Did you make it yourself? You're the first person to ask me that. Yes, I did. You seem so quirky and cool. You could do anything. Own an Etsy store, be a doctor. Why is it that you kill people? Not your size. You practically see the memory flickering across her eyes, but she hasn't uh, tried to kill you yet, so that's a good sign. It was all I ever do to talk as a young girl, so I thought it was right. Even though the mask you see that Huntress is blushing a bit, it seems like your line of questioning has made her a little nervous. Hey, you didn't eat much dinner. Want a snack? She offers you some jerky. Probably some human jerky, but her spice cream is on point because it smells pretty damn good. When on murder's on, you might as well eat as the killers do. Plus, you are hungry, and you can chow on the jerky, essentially, right? I'd love some. After a moment of quiet chewing what you choose to believe it is not human thigh meat, you decide to be bold and ask another question. Have you ever been in a relationship before? Dang, you're really going there? You did not play around. I... Um... Huntress takes a moment to think deeply before answering. I must say, it's quite amusing to see that this hulking bombshell get all twisted up with these personal questions. Kudos to you! There was this one deer that looked at me quite provocatively in the clearing once, but that doesn't count, does it? You hear the faintest giggle bubble out from behind Huntress's mask. <laughs> You're so cute, Huntress. Uh, no, it doesn't count. Whoa, what's this? You found something in the sand. Huntress reaches it down to pick it up. It's a hair clip, probably by some little girl who was playing along the beach a long time ago who was definitely still alive and not at all dead. Huntress closed the bag of jerky with the hair clip. Seems like she's a little mixed up on how this particular item works. Should you go with the flow or should you or shop your knowledge of advanced human aim? Maybe we could show her. You silly goose. You chuckle before the bag. You take the bray up and come. Much better. Huntress is so happy that you taught her something new about human drink. She touches the clip in her hair with a shy smile. Just as things you're really hearing up, heating up, you hear a flurry of footsteps behind you and quickly spin around, to, really to find out that whole, whatever new danger has popped up on the strange island. Only to find out it's Dwight and Claudette sprinting across the beach with clipboards in hand and they're waving in the air above their heads. It's very important that we stick to the itinerary and attend each event as scheduled. Playing sick for cute flirt points was not part of this evening's activities. That's strictly slotted for after campfire story time. At this rate, we'll be late. Playing sick? No, I was... No time for excuses. Well, there is, but there's that scheduled for after what comes after the flirting. Go, 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 go! Once everyone has gathered at the fire pit, White and Claudette quickly make an announcement. Uh, we're not going to blame anyone in particular, but someone, and we're not going to say who, so don't worry, you, has been sticking to the schedule. That means we're behind on time for evening activities, and we'll only have time for one person to share their personal spooky nighttime story. Just one story, but story time is my favorite activity. This is a narrative-heavy experience. You're telling us that only one person gets to share? How will we decide who? Oh, great. We have to decide as a group. That never goes well. Whoever did this never- No, I swear I won't be angry. I'll ch really chop your head off, head clean off. No fuss, no muss. Uh, voice trembling, you probably realize this is you. probably it for you, but you embrace your fate. Uh, sorry, everyone. I think they're talking about me. To be honest, I still don't know how this whole schedule thing works. I guess I lost track of time while I passed out. I've uh, been there before. Even though it's taking some pressure off me, it's what an absolute dream come true. Is it really fair to pick on the newbie? Seriously, has anything ever happened here ever happened on schedule even once? Damn it, Donald! If you try to flex our authority, give me one more time and then snap, wrap your head off so quickly. Brown blood. Cynthia, boss and muscle are back on. You two know I love to hack, slash, and slice. We all know you love to kill. It's almost you, all you talk about. Nobody named any names. Who even knows any names? Not us. 
I renounce my name. Who's Donald? Who's Dwight? Who even knows anymore? Call me nobody. Uh, but we still gotta get started in story time, so... Wait, who do you think you should go? Damn, that's a name. Please pick someone so that this tropical vacation doesn't turn into a bloodbath. I choose you, Huntress. Whoa, whoa. This entire experience is being carefully calculated to avoid an IP infringement lawsuit. But let's be careful with catchphrases, will ya? Huntress steps up to tell her story. It can't put her flickers into her faraway eyes. There is a village outside the deep and ominous red wood. No child dare step foot past the threshold of thick trees and brush that separate safely from the unknown. Grown men that ventured in there often would return to the sounds and echoed into the village was something inhuman. The woman of the town told the story to the young children, hoping that it would be enough to dissuade them from the curious exploration beyond the boundaries of the village. They told of a creature that lurks in the woods, half woman, half beast, singing like a siren. Haunting, beautiful, her voice is the last relic of her humanity. It lulls all who hear in her domain, and not precocious child nor fierce soldier can escape once you are in her clutches. Those who have seen her says she wears a mask of hair stained with the blood of so many poor souls. The hatchet she wields have been brought down brutally on the spell of many unsuspecting hunter. The nightmare doesn't end there. What's a hungry beast to do in the frigid winters with nothing but hunter meat to live off of? It is said that the huntress, as the villagers called her, couldn't bring herself to kill the young girls she came across in the forest. Instead, they'd suffer an even worse fate. Long for a child of her own, she'd bring them back to her secluded cabin to keep them safe. She'd wrap a tight cord rope around their necks and affix them to them. That way, they'd be warm. That way, they'd be out of harm's way. Oh no! The huntress would come to the green girl's presence, toys she'd pilfer from other bodies, masks she'd fashioned out of things from the cottage, and little dolls made of grass and twigs, but these toys did nothing to quell the children's fear. Within days, the girls would waste away from starvation and dehydration. For all her contentions, the huntress had never learned how to care for a human child. You see a tear creep down from the, underneath the huntress, and suddenly the most beautiful singing voice you ever heard fills the air. Time have you been your bed so tight? Else the old gray wolf will come and grab you by your side. There's a brief moment of silence. You feel the need to contribute to this stirring moment. He'll snatch you up between his teeth if on the bed says you sleep and you drag to the forest deep. Beneath the quaking tree. Huntress can't believe you know the song. You share an intimate glance across the campfire. So close your eyes and fall asleep. Count the little woolly sheep. Tucked so tightly you must keep. Or he will come for you. The song ends in your book met with silence around the campfire. I love that song. By you, but you got the old Soviet lullaby, right? It's a song my mother used to sing to me before at bed every night. But now I must go. The memories they are so much. On that note, everyone said it's time to take a break and split up for a little bit so they can all have a moment alone before bed. Everyone leaves you and you're alone by the fire. The only thing that you hear is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore. This is nice. A true moment of peace and tranquility that lasts all for seven seconds because Trickster shows up and he's blaring his latest song. Hey, baby. You look lonely. Mind if I join you? He doesn't wait for an answer. I know you've been hearing from these guppies all day, but I want to hear something from a big fish like me. Something special those in charge of this island don't want you to hear. I am the ultimate catch of this, this island. The only lobster in an ocean of sardines. No one can give you what I can. You'll just have to find me. Come find me, baby. Trickster leaves. You're a bit confused about his cryptic clues, but you aren't going to get any time to yourself to think about them just yet. Huntress approaches you. Of course you liked my story. Who wouldn't? It had everything. Cute kids, dead men, a huntress. I find that all sorts of better with the sound of a burning fire filling the air around you. 
all the smoke, however, I could do without. I'd rather eat barbecue than smell like it. Let's rinse up all that campfire with a dip in the hot tub, shall we? Dipping in the hot tubs with the huntress? You've come a long way in a single day. I'm not saying you shouldn't follow her and offer like that. Just don't forget our little talk. Oh boy. You and your storyteller friend slip into the water. It's just the right temperature for an evening dip. Plus, some jealous shark comes along and manages to jump from the ocean into the pool. You're also pretty sure your, your killer can be looking hand flick. Uh, before you run off, I wanted to make something clear. You know that half woman, half beast I was talking in my story? Uh, that's me. I'm her. No way! How cool! That's really awesome! Thanks for being vulnerable and telling such a personal story. Huntress foe shyly twirls her hair. Tell the truth. What did you tell me? Do I have the makings of the best selling author of Meek Mastermind Dostoevsky? It was a really well told narrative. Clever, clear beginning, middle, and end. Rooted from the start, plus the woman in the force. I mean, you are clearly not a true villain. You were just a traumatized child. Okay, now you're just being a sucker. Huntress's eyes leer at you from behind her mask. She's had her time in the spotlight and is playing coy now. You chuckle awkwardly at Huntress's statement of the obvious. But why are you laughing? I, I can't help but giggle when I'm about to both die and maybe also fall in love. You can't believe how awkward this intimidating woman seems like now. It's actually pretty endearing. You notice the temperature has dropped significantly despite your steaming company. It's a little chilly and your bare shoulders must be freezing. Let's head back to the fire and put me to bed, eh? Uh, we have to intrude on whatever smooth boots we're about to unveil themselves. But it's time for bed. Usually, night times when I do my best hunting. Uh, but after a day like today, I'm pretty tuckered out. Well, I see you tomorrow. Only if I don't see you first. You make a cute little bow hunting motion. Huntress just catch the imaginary arrow you shoot in her teeth and then bites it down hard. Snapping in half. At least you think that's what she's doing. It's kind of hard to tell. Good night, my little snack. I'm sure that wasn't reference to you actually eating. You head over to the campfire. The heat is comforting on this chilly night. Looking into the crackling embers, you think about Hunter's story of the half human beast that abducted all those innocent children in an attempt to save them that led to their doom. Are you a mistaken prisoner here on this island? Is this your salvation, or will it be your demise? Before you can dwell on it, your fake Claudette and White arrive. There are now three familiar creepy smiles stretching from ear to ear. It's a bit menacing to see a smile like that, lit by a firelight. We must apologize for the accommodations. We weren't prepared for another guest, but we're going to make you comfortable or die trying. They hand you a pillow and blanket and welcome you to snuggle up by the fire. Uh, perhaps some music will put you at ease. Just try to keep the volume to a minimum. Our other guests aren't the types you want to rob of their beats. Oh boy, more mini games. This here is an upcoming mini game, especially perfect for the less coordinated because there is no winning or losing. But well, not technically. Wherever the pointer stops, that's your result. I suppose it doesn't stop where you want to because that's a bit like losing, but no one has to know if you don't tell them. As you relax and look into the fire, the radio begins to fuzz and flicker. You examine and decide that it might just the dial and fix it. Let's see what's on this station. No matter how many things you still can't, you decide to ask one of the killers to spend a little bit more time until you're sleepier. Who would you like to summon to your side as you lay by the fire? Huntress, are you around? I was wondering if I could get a little company. Huntress appears in an instant. You really didn't hear her coming. She's more than happy to tell you your secret for falling asleep when she's feeling restless. If a Soviet lullaby doesn't work, the special mushroom tea has always done the trick. While I'm not cold in my. The, bl the, bl the, bl the blade of my hatchet to ease the passing of my victims. I'm steeping it in a piping hot mug of water. Try it. You do. You find such, except maybe this isn't 
you're paralyzed. You try to keep your eyes open, but you can't. Darkness overtakes you. The dark voice from earlier speaks. It shouldn't still be a spooky, but now you've had a whole day of strange voices in your head, but this one's undeniably odd. Really worked up a sweat watching those killers toss the ball around, huh? What if it hurts so much to splash in cool water and ocean waves afterwards? I'm just saying, I'm out here, you know. You wake suddenly to see someone looming over you. When you wake up, you find spirits sitting beside you, reading a worn paperback. Oh, hey, what? Shh. Clearly, she has noticed that you're awake, but she hasn't actually looked. Seems like she's pretty focused on that book. Shh. It seems like forever she stares at the page before shutting the book and settling down. Oh, you're awake. Yeah, I, uh, never mind. I saw you with the Huntress right before bedtime. I won't tell you how to live your life, but if you ask me, you could do it a lot better. It's completely by accident I even saw them over here. It's not like I was looking out for you or anything. This was simply the best reading light, and the text in my book is very, very fine print, so it's tough to read in the dark. Don't get the wrong idea. You and I are obviously mind our own business types, not phony looking out for each other as an excuse for just being nosy types. But, well, since you're here and I'm here, maybe we've got other things in common? Who knows? If we spent a little bit more time together tomorrow, we might find that. I don't know. We get along, and I, by get along, I mean sim exist simply and comfortably without feeling any burning desire to assassinate the other person. Or not. Whatever. I don't even care. Bye. Uh, good night and sweet dreams to you too, I guess? Finally alone, for real this time. Maybe. You drift off to sleep again. Hopefully you're not poisoned. Wait a second. Where are we? This isn't... Oh, jeez, it is. It's one of those reality show conventional rooms where all the contestants talk directly to the camera. I think today really went well. Those were some of my first interactions with someone who isn't a parent that didn't end in bloodshed or untimely perishing in my Russian cottage. So I'm counting today as a win no matter what happens. What do I think of the newcomer? Um, do I have to say, oh, I do. Attractive. Mysterious. I really don't know that many other words since I was raised by my mom in the woods until she was skewered by an elk and I had to wash her entrails off my seraphim. That being said, the other three should, make, should be on their guard. I don't know who this newcomer will spend time with, but I, for one, will not let my guard down easily. Who knows about the others? Great, I think he knows more than he's laying on about this place, but he's a hard nut to crack. Meanwhile, Spirit's just screaming all the time. Major Buzzkill and Trapper. Where do I even begin with Trapper? He's buff, sure, but daddy issues much? Sheesh. Look, I don't need anyone. I've been perfectly fine on my own since my little life, and I eat a fine diet of raw deer, bear, and human, and I'm fit as a fiddle. That being said, something about this newcomer makes me think I might be missing out on something a huge part of this thing called life. If I'm being honest, I just want to kill every person I meet within the mi minute of meeting them. Even if the few people I can tolerate, I want to see something for a long time. Before I kill them. But this person... For some reason, I'd rather continue living. For now. One false step and... <laughs> well, you know, everyone calls me Trapper for a reason, and they better call me Trapper. I swear, if I watch this later and you listen to me as Evan, I'm gonna kill the Chiron guy. Yeah, today was fun. I don't want to get ahead of myself for really um, investing in something that might hurt me, so I don't know. Uh, maybe we'll just see how it goes, or maybe they'll realize I'm not one, the one for them. They seem pretty smart, so that'll probably what happen. I, I gotta learn to go easier on myself. Who can love me if I can't love myself? You know, I think I learned a lot about myself today. I always thought I was doomed to be alone for eternity, only my creeping desire for revenge to keep me company. Now I know it. You open your eyes. The sun is shining. There's not a cloud in the sky, even though the that this uh, static image would say otherwise, and you feel great, totally well rested. You're not even suspicious of the fact that you fell asleep by the campfire, but woke up several yards down the beach. Wait, are you on vacation? Was yesterday nothing more than a strange dream? No, not a dream. You are here for another day. Why? I have no idea. You're obviously a weirdo. 
Speaking of weirdos, I'd say the rest of the gang is hanging out on the beach. It's is definitely not a dream. I wouldn't rule out a nightmare just yet, though. At, at least they make a sexy bunch, no? And talk about sexy, here comes Trickster carrying coffee. Morning, beautiful. I thought you needed a nice cup of joe to start this incredible day right off. Trapster seems suspiciously cheerful. I'm sure there's nothing nefarious behind this joyful demeanor, though. Everyone knows musicians are morning people. I also wish you, want to wish you luck. Today is an important one. My only regret is that I won't be a bigger part of it. Budgeting issues. Also, I'm just swamped with engagements, especially on the other island. Trickster wins at you. If you want to ask him how to reach the other island, now's the to Never mind, he left. Well, at least he brought a nice cup of. No, wait, don't drink that! What the hell was that? They don't call him Trickster because he's god good at skateboard, and he definitely didn't get that name because he brings people drinks so they could have a good morning. That was almost certainly not coffee, and I don't want anyone casually poisoning, imprisoning, and torturing you. Yet. This is supposed to be a tropical paradise, the typical place that gives you. 5 of 5, 10 of 10, 2 thumbs up review, not to be an internal prison of pain. And please make sure to leave a review, it really helps with the algorithms. Just trust me, I'm looking out for you, so can we please move on? Hey, wait a second, how did a possibly omnipotent, possibly unreliable narrator physically just knock that copy out of your hand? This is not Parliament, and the floor does not recognize the ocean to speak at this turn out of turn at this moment. I need no recognition. I am the ocean. I dominate the land. I submerge those who defy me and become their watery grave. Actually, speaking of graves, I would like to say something. Something of grave importance. Fine, go ahead. Even if this place is an internal prison of pain, and I'm not saying an extreme being horror can still receive 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10 thumbs up review if it was corrupted with love and or the type of thing you're into. You know what? The ocean's right. A lot of hard work goes into a place like this. You should really judge it on the artist's intent, and whenever possible, start from the mindset of giving them the benefit of the doubt. Constructing these elaborate simulations, uh, I mean vacations, is not easy to do. Sometimes there are small bugs or inconsistencies, but that's just the nature of the process. Perfection's overrated. The universe is filled with mysteries. We all celebrate those who venture to bear their souls in part of a creative process with the ultimate intent of making things for our enjoyment, not to be overly critical. Uh, are you two trying to sell me on this place being actually being good? Uh, you don't have to say it like that, especially after I saved it from that poorly made cup of coffee. Uh, sorry, we should have been here five minutes ago. There's always to do, they always do this on the second morning. Sad, really, even if they do make some great points. Oh, sure, they make great points, I agree. Can we please move on? Yes, of course, apologies. The last few minutes aside, how have you been enjoying your time on the island? Yes, I'm suspicious that there's no, no option. Alice can describe the set's really entertaining. Wow! Ten stars, here we come! Uh, can someone remind me to skip this section next time? Nope! We do need to ask you one more question, though. We all have to sign away our rights to say anything negative about this place. But would you please this sign this non-disparagement agreement? Uh, yes, I would hereby agree to participate in a verbal conference saying that I will never say anything negative about my stay on this island. Perfect! Delightful. Excellent. Yes! Yes! Hey, it's still totally cool if we have constructive feedback. This place uh, to leave that is in the positive review, because we all know that nobody reads negative reviews of games or resorts like this. Anyway, I see Dwight and Claudette have gone to a transit with the grumbling I hear from your belly, that can only mean one thing. Breakfast. Perfect timing. Everyone rolls into the dining area here to lard up those sexy little bellies with pancakes and bacon and... Uh, so much for maintaining those beach pods. We're all half naked in tropic paradise. Can we get some strawberries here? Yogurt? Magic powers won't get you so far. Even killers with their so watch their sodium intake. You take your plate and sit down, thinking about yesterday and the whirlwind of feelings you experienced. Danger, dread, disorientation. It was like going through puberty again, except all one day on a beautiful and mysterious island. 
It looks like you're not the only one doing some introspection, though. Trapper seems to have to talk about how his day went in case anyone was wondering. Personally, I wasn't. I'll be honest, I didn't expect you to survive yesterday, so congrats, I guess. Whether you survive today is 50 50 at best. Good luck. Well, that was bizarre. Back to your breakfast! Nope. Now Hunter steps up to talk about her feelings. I feel stirring inside my animal heart. Something I've never felt before. It's almost like feeling the right before I go in for the kill. But softer. Warmer. Sounds like it could be love, or maybe if that indigestion from all that raw beef she had last night. Oh, well, that surely was it. No one else would so weirdly stand up to breakfast, too. And just like that, here comes Spirit. If I look especially well rested this morning, it's not because I sleep well. As you know, I'm much too dedicated to finding revenge to ever sleep again. But because you all left, really left me alone yesterday to not, best not constantly annoy itself, and I think you that. Now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna be go back to quietly resenting being trapped here with you all while looking cute to yourself. Uh, guessing Wraith had enough time to work up the courage to speak in front of a group. Ah, perfect, there he is. Tag us home, Wraith. Oh, hey. That was from yesterday, huh? Yeah, I mean, not like too much fun. That would be weird, but like a good amount of fun. And now they're all looking at you speculating. Wait, are you supposed to stand up and explain how your day yesterday made you feel? Uh, I need to think I need to process everything by myself. I'll see you all soon. Damn, what a power play. You don't want any more. You're getting good at this game, or, uh, sexy, true-to-life experience. Uh, shame you didn't get to eat any breakfast, but so be it. After breakfast, you head to the hot tub by yourself to clear your head. Yesterday was, in short, a lot. But before you get there, though, something catches your attention. You hear that? Who are you addressing, me? Well, yeah, I guess that's okay, right? You know, I might be pursuing relations with one of these four fine killers, but it feels like the person getting you to know the most is you, narrator. It's only okay in so much as it serves to illustrate that you've lost your mind and seeing how I'm not real enough. Yeah, I have heard it this time. I think it's coming from behind the pool shed. No, no, stick it in there. A little more. A little more. Oh, yeah, that's it. Is. That's it, yes. How does that feel? Intense. Nice. Wow, that feels right. This is uncomfortable. Now I want you to take it and put it right. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Just like that. Exactly like that. I swear, I had no idea that those two even do, uh, whatever it is they're doing. I'm afraid to look. Please say something that you know you're close by and can hear everything. Uh, oh, wow, look at this super cool bottle of Trickster Brand Suntan Lotion someone left on a chair. Anyone know where I could buy some? Damn it! Uh, come on, a little privacy, please. White is painting on Claudette has a crazy look in her eyes. Sorry, I didn't know how else to let you know I was here, and that I could hear you well, you know. No, what? What do you think we were doing? You were doing... I don't know what exactly we doing, but it sounded like, uh, fun? You think two people trying to find new ways to kill each other in a desperate search to make their own death permanent is fun? Oops. We get five minutes to ourselves every day, and we spend it hoping we can stab each other in just the right spot so we don't get resurrected. I come to believe that finding the key, key is the fun exact place we need to bleed out from, and I believe that our place is in our appendix. Why else would it be there? Makes sense to me. Did you actually think we were... Me and him? Dwight? <laughs> you don't have to laugh that hard, they get it. <laughs> My life is a nightmare, and yet somehow it's never been worse than right now. Let's go, lover boy. I noted all our entry wounds and our five minutes is up anyway. Good luck, you're gonna need it. And hey, if you figure out how to escape this island, please make sure your ghost tells us how. That was both a tragedy and a comedy. A cragmity. Shut up! I like it. Anyway, where were you? Oh yeah! You're heading to the hot tub yourself to clear your head. Yesterday was in short a lot. So far today has been exhausting too. Uh, but you're dedicated to achieving a true centered sense of calm. No drama, no bullshit, just soaking up in the sun and the heated pool. 
Today you're on a date with uh, you. Ooh, I like that. I want to be on a date with me. Who would make the first move? And aside from that disturbing plot, it all is going to the plane's shadow blocks your precious sun. Spiky tip, like a palm tree is bending over to screw with you. Uh, but it's no tree at all, it's... Hey babe. Breakfast is weird, huh? Everyone just getting up and announcing how they're feeling. What's that about? Some force kind of checking with the group? I don't like it. Flash fishy, kind of lazy. Whatever though, breakfast is dumb. No one should eat before noon or after 4 p.m. Yeah, I do intermittent fasting. You've seen my abs, by the way. Maybe you could see them later at my private stage on the other island. You know, the I IPI, where all the Hollywood celebs hang out if you play your cards right. I can give you a private show. Got gotcha you around. His apps are pretty amazing. You gotta give him that. And that blow up bat? Threatening but adorable. Makes him for an interesting silhouette. Genius design. He's a psychopath just like the rest of them. You don't gotta give him anything. And we're not best friends. Just because we've had a little talk about doing a little talking. It's not an open invitation to go smashing the fourth wall every five seconds. Okay, now that that guy's done, we've got some ground rules that establish that we're definitely going to abide by. It's time to lay back, take some dose of sleep rest, and... Nope. Another shadow. Those people will never leave you alone. Well, let's see who it is this time. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, yes. Huntress. That makes sense. You two have gotten pretty cozy. We should get out of here. I know of a place that's quiet and out of the way. No one will be able to hunt us. I mean, hear us through there. Doesn't that sound intriguing? But immediately, a flood of worry uh, floods your brain. Should you pack a picnic, bring your swimsuit, a pocket knife? You decide to bring as much as you can. You have to make a run for it at some point, and you should be prepared. But of course, you were washed, you washed up on this island with nothing but the clothes on your back, so... You've got nothing to gather. Are you really ready for this? I mean, they call her the Huntress, not the Hugstress. You look up at this towering goddess, trying to form sentence, when suddenly... Before you can decide to go up with her, the Trapper interjects. I demand you reconsider. Why settle with a bunny for a hatchet when you can have everything you ever wanted? Uh, tough choice. You weigh your options quickly, but... Or you can go on one date today and you don't want to be hacked to pieces for saying the wrong thing. It's always good to remember all these cold blood killers, but you know what they say, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And then die horrible, wretched, writhing death after drinking it, because lemons will poison it all along. Sorry, this island has really got me tilted. So who will it be? We already are getting along with Huntress, so... Uh, I gotta go with Huntress. Whee! You and Huntress make way for the secluded beach house. Your heart thrums in your chest. Does, don't look it up. Thrums is a real word, I swear. Are these nerves excitement or terror? Is it fun to the mix of sexy and the horrifying? Huntress is quiet as a mouse as she guides you through the island forest. You struggle to keep with us. She moves like a jungle cat, all muscle and silent leaps across the thorny brush. She halts and suddenly crushes into her, having been desperately trying to keep up. You follow her gaze and realize you've arrived at a cabin in the woods, obligatory in, in nearly all horror films and stories, and you come here willingly with a fearsome killer. Great job! The cabin is cozy, but something seems off about it. You can't quite put your finger on what it is. Huntress stares at you through her bunny mess, cocking her head to the side and trying to gauge your reaction to her hideaway. Uh, are you gonna invite me inside? Why do you need an invitation? Are you a vampire? <laughs> no. Oh. Is it just me or Huntress and a little disappointed? Didn't pick her for a lover of the thing, but hey, I don't judge. And come in, let's explore. You follow her inside. It's creepy, rickety, and definitely not to code, but it certainly has a certain homey charm. You're quite the decorator. If she blushes, indeed she is. A chandelier made of bones hangs from the foyer ceiling, and a collection of trinkets lines the mantle. Something tells you that the people who once owned these things are not of mortal coil anymore. Could you be Huntress's next victim? The thought gives you a wicked thrill. Hey, she's looking at you again. What do you think of my collection? I'm more of a minimalist. I can learn to like this so much. 
I could certainly learn to like this. This whole place is quite tactile. There's so much to look at. The organized scales makes me want to craft things with my hands. I knew you'd like it here. You have the eye of someone who appreciates buying stolen things. I can't wait to go treasure hunting with you. We could find so many more goodies on the island. But first, what do you think of the other killer on the island? I mean, Trickster is pretty out there, but everyone else seems like they're having interesting backstories and whatnot. A little gossip, huh? What are you playing at? Hunter Skins, there's this for a beat. She seems to have two modes, thoughtful and explosive. You hope to never be in the splash room when the explosive part emerges. But why are you jealous? Before you can answer, the house begins to shake. Huntress loses her balance on the termite infested floor and falls into her, your arms. You're not mad about it, but before you have time to enjoy this, to taking this moment in... Oh no, it's an attack! A horde of killer crabs invades through the crevices in the poorly constructed cabin. They race you and Huntress in swarms, clacking the razor sharp claws at you. You must act quickly. What will you do? Grab Shashka. You quickly reach out to grab a being the highly educated person you definitely are, you know that the Shashka is a Russian sword, not an umbrella or a can of cola or something else like that. Back to back with hunters, you both pack away the attacking crustaceans. You manage to slay the majority of the Kelly the ones you miss go scurrying back into their hidey holes. Huntress turns with a gaze that's full of passion and danger. However, without the bugs over, she looks away, suppressing the spoon. Is she nervous? Huntress sits down on the wicker catch and begins cleaning off the guts of her hatchet. It's an obligatory scene for every killer. You're just happy not to be the source of what she's wiping off. Looks like we're having crab for dinner. Uh, she doesn't smile at your joke. She has that ponderous look on her face again. You join her on the couch. Man, sometimes those near-death experiences really got me thinking what I want to know. I think I'd really like to start a family one day. How about you? Uh, of course, I'd love kids. I would love to be a parent one day. Hunter smiles. I loved my dear mother so much, I can't wait to have that sort of special relation with my daughter one day. Teach her everything I know. And I won't be killed by some horrible elf. Uh, what were you like as a kid? You try to imagine this giantess as a meek child in a puffer coat wandering around the forest. Huntress chuckles, her laugh quite cute and soft. I was so innocent. We hunted to survive, then went back to the cottage, and mother would tell me stories, and we drank tea and imagined the life far away in the woods. Something like this. I suppose I finally achieved what I wanted, what she always wanted me, but since coming here, something feels off. It's beautiful and warm, and everyone is so attractive, like thirst traps galore. But don't you get the feeling that something is coming for us? Oh no, she's on to you. But on to you about what? Swirling memories rush through your head. Nightmares, visions of a dark cloud, Claudette and Dwight's vacant series that belie some sort of hypnosis. Quit, validate her theory, or try to pull, push it off. I think you're onto something. Who knows? How long have you all been here? Do you remember anything about why you might be here? I've been having these dreams, seeing things. I think we're all serving some greater purpose here. Huntress reveals a strange object that she stole from near the stage where Trixie comes. It has some strange symbol on it. Truthfully, it doesn't seem strange to you. It's just a glass bottle. However, the label is interesting. She hands it over to you, but before she can explain her theory, Claudette and Dwight burst on you and interrupt. We have a dramatic announcement! Uh, but it needs to happen back at the beach. You arrive at the beach and realize you were set up. There is no big announcement after all. What, ha what we have here is a good old-fashioned rivalry. It's true. Exactly like that voice that we cannot hear and certainly aren't referencing sets. We were forced to interrupt your lifting date by another killer. They are here and ready to make you an offer of love you won't be able to deny. A trapper emerges from the water. Is he in slow motion? He's pure thirst. He's Paul Newman on horseback. He's Denzel on the cover of GQ. Manly manliness brought to life. Also, he was holding his grip under there the whole time to waiting for his cue. That's commitment if I had to be, if I ever seen it. Have you heard spent you haven't heard you spent a day in a quaint cottage? That's cute. How about a quaint mansion? Or better yet, how about one in each continent? Yeah, I'm thinking including Antarctica, I'm really rich. Think of how cozy we can get there in snowy ten bedroom chateau. One of the pools has half indoor, half outdoor, but nice and warm throughout. 
That way you can kill the mama polar bear from the outside while watching her cubs cry over her body from the inside. Wow, Trapper is the real deal. And by real, I do mean real, and by deal, I mean evil. Plus, you really want to hunt for food for the rest of your With me, but you can get it both ways. Savagery and someone to clean up you. Sounds nice, huh? Uh-oh. We are not backing away from, uh, Huntress. Uh, that life isn't for me, bro. I'm very impressed you can speak with implied quotation marks. Very cool. This guy's a total douche nozzle. Try hard much? He's like the turn of century Pacific Northwest version of a Wall Street bro. Trust me, it's rats. Patrick Bateman with a huge chip on his shoulder wouldn't go shoulder. You wouldn't go with him if he was branching clear at you. Oh shit, he is! Thanks, but no thanks. I'm into acquired lifestyle. I relish my independence and I don't need someone to wipe my butt. You run back to the huge arms of Huntress. She hugs you so tight. So tight, you think she can feel the life leave your body for a moment, but it hurts so good. You know what? I'm impressed that you stood up to me. I appreciate someone giving their total honest opinion, even if that opinion makes me want to carve out your liver. And with that bite, with, that's not what I meant by cleaning up after you, but I'm hiring someone to do that from the moment I get home. Trapper leaves and turns, and you turn to Huntress. Walking in slow motion back into the water. It's pretty weird. He's just gonna stay in there all night. Uh, shall we continue our date? Huntress leads you back to her cabin. You thought you'd remember the way, but it's like the force has completely changed. Nothing is familiar. Better not get lost out here. Can you believe that guy? Classic trapper pulling a move like that. I'm so glad you chose me, though. I think we've explored all there is between us yet. She winks the bunny mess eye and scoops you back into her back. Huntress runs through the woods with you piggyback riding her. The wind ruffles your hair. Animals clear path for the mighty woods woman as she faces races by the lead. That famous teen vampire drum that once in she calls her spider monkey. Huntress doesn't call you that. Whee! Eventually, she gently lowers you to the ground and you take in your surroundings, a wooden clearing in the forest. Huntress prances around like a deer in a meadow. I like to come here sometimes to clear up my head and pack up a few some woodland creatures. Foxes are my favorite thing to slaughter. I think they're so cute and sly when I see right through them. They're just assholes. Great with hot sauce. Huntress hears wrestling darts up to my sword, scratching down low like an animal. Now you're alone in the middle Which way did you come from again? No idea. You sense the direction is all off. A lipless voice fills through the air, landing upon your ears like syrupy honey. Come find me! Oh boy. Perfect! Not bad. Tag! You boop Huntress on the shoulder when you find her. She high fives you. You're trying to date this young lady or just bro down all day. You're so good at hiding, I'm having a real blast. But thanks, they say it takes 10,000 hours of practice to get good at something. Hey, they do say that. That was fun, huh? I keep trying to relax and have a good time, but that's really hard for me. Anytime I let my guard down, something terrible happens. Uh, like what? But sometimes I find young girls in the woods, little perfect angels that need my protection. But if I turn my back to them, they will end up dying. Uh, that got dark, but you feel like Huntress wouldn't admit this to just anyone. Oh look, Claudette and Dwight are back. Okay, we swear we're here for a good reason this time. Yeah, no one is manipulating us this time, it's just time for dinner. Come get some grub. What a fun day you've been having. I could see it written all over your face. You're shining. And that's not just the remaining ancient sweat from spending an afternoon courting a psycho killer. No, no, you're feeling this whole romantic experience. Don't worry, I'll keep up your dirty little secrets. But enough gentle ribbing. It's time to get back to business. Ah, appetizing singles have arrived for dinner, including Trickster. Uh, right this year, too. We're not going to do the gag where we cram them all in one screen again, just so you believe me. 
They're all here, and they're just as sexy and demented as you remember them. With your love on the line, everyone's being very careful not to offend you by saying the wrong thing. Congrats, by the way, on getting this far. I'm surprised to you that these four are falling for you. No, not because of your personality, but because you just made them yes met them yesterday. However, since Spirit seems like the biggest long shot to end up holding in your heart, she throws caution to the wind and speaks up. It's a pretty small consolation for us for being the least loved killer on Murderer's Island, but hey, letting them have this one moment in the spotlight is the least we can do, and heaven knows they all won't do any better than that. Clearly, I need to do a little bit more and be part of this group, or I'll be alone forever. However, I don't eat and I like being alone, so I take all that back. I don't care what the group has for dinner, as long as we can start with shrimp cocktail. I saw a movie once where these skills turned shrimp cocktail into a hypnotized synchronized dance, and I'm still working out. You mean beetle light? Stop me from saying it! Uh, beetle shrimp, the most rare and delicious type of shrimp? Uh, beetle shrimp? Is that some new species? Because I've hunted many beetle and many shrimp, but I've never heard of beetle shrimp. Uh, of course you haven't. Like Spirit says, they've got hypnotic power, and anyone who sees them soon forgets. Also, something to do with dancing? I wasn't going to say anything that dumb. No, I was going to say... Hitcher! Uh, excuse you, like, now you were saying, Trapper? You've done all you can. I appreciate it. I'm gonna have to narrate uh, us out of this, somehow. Hold on. Are you afraid we might accidentally recite as some spell and conjure a ghost because I hate to break it to you? It's a bit like that. Uh, and then, uh, <laughs> great giant osprey swooped down and dropped a severed head onto the table, distracting everyone. Proper! Hey, I've never seen this particular severed head before. What? This time I'm being honest. Uh, sorry, not my finest work, but something had to be done. We gotta be careful about which cultural references we get mixed up with that song. Uh, dinner will be served shortly, but certain power brokers would like to know about your day. Who would you like to share your day with the rest of the group? You've had an interesting day, that's for sure, but how will you describe it with others? Say too much or too little and it can affect your standing within the group. Okay, but just don't sit there saying nothing. Nothing's not an option. Uh, today was nuts. We went to Hunters to see the cabin and killer crabs attacked us. It's true! I'll fall asleep tonight to the delicious sound of crunching crustaceans. That would have never happened on my yacht. I grind them up, much more satisfying way to kill the crabs. At least those kinds of crabs. I'll, I have a little comb for the other kind. It's White and Claudette bring out dinner. Everyone eats in silence. No one trusts anyone now. And they're all very tired. Oh wait. No, sorry. That's a dreary supernatural horror thrill set in Antarctica, and not charming parody things in an and undisclosed tropical paradise. Bony appetite! Uh, don't you mean bone? Uh, no, almost everything we serve has a lot of bones in it, even the vegetables. Impossible to avoid on this island. Everyone eats without speaking. Tensions are rising, both for sexual and deadly variety. With everyone finishes, Dwight and Claudia come back to clean up the table. They linger around as you pick up your plate, you take your napkin, and dust crumbs off the table. What would you like to say to the servants? Uh, your top-notch service is much appreciated. Everyone, if you would please be so kind as to fall to the fire pit, we'd greatly appreciate it. We've been told something big is going to happen. Something that will change everything. You can go willingly, or you can go only. You have no choice. Tap the do we have- did you have a choice of how to say that, dweeb? Yes, and I immediately regret how I did. Good. Something needs to change around here. Fire is rebirth. The fire illuminates the soul. I hope the fire isn't too smoky. Smoke hurts my eyes. I'm pretty sensitive eyes. I'm also horribly afraid of it. The fire, I mean, not my eyes. Because of childhood trauma. Involving fire. And finally, everyone starts moving to the fire pit, if only to get rid of- get away from Reese complaining. You take a seat on the comfortable log, feeling the fire's heat against your own skin and wait for the other killers to take their places, wondering who will tell a story this time. Will narrative tell a story? I bet they got stunned and created mine. Hey, you think, are they allowed to simply place thoughts in my mind like this? Doesn't seem fair. Everyone makes their way in, but something unexpected happens. Nothing. Nothing happens. 
Something always, almost always seems to be happening here, so nothing is probably not a great sign. Oh, cool, and now everyone's looking at you. So, you know, do something. Uh, should I say, some, tell someone, to, or we could play charades? Boggle! Uh, well, we were actually thinking, why don't you tell us a story? Rafe points his spine and skull staff thing to dig at you. You duck out of his way. Who knows what this thing could do? Probably shoots lasers. Try not to bore us! We're just very interested in you. Don't speak for me, Huntress. Now, you can't tell if you were warm from the fire or if it's nerdy enough. I know what that fire is. Right here. But maybe if we stop talking about it all the time, we can start to pretend it's not here and doesn't, you know, threaten to burn us all alive. He's uh, not supposed to hear me. Get out of here, Wraith. Light was supposed to t have an important decision about telling a story or not. Uh, sure, I'm going to tell a story. I hope it's a mystery! Uh, okay, so what type of story do you want to tell? Alright, you like Dwayne the Rock Jackson. How about some adventure? Now we're talking! It's not my favorite, but I respect your choice and will not politely. You don't have to say that, for you. just not politely. Okay, ready, here goes. I really like to go fishing. Solid hobby, great foundation for a story, for sure. Pause. Everyone was waiting for Babe from No Pun Intended. Oh, wait, that isn't it. Not much of a story. Barely even a thought. My pun was better than me. You sure that's all you have to say? No, I was just kidding. So, what type of story do you want to tell? I'll get a little personal now, if that's okay. Those types of tales are the best and often the most sad. It's a bit of a love story. Is it about two strong hunters when they both try to bludgeon with the same lively woman? Or Danger Angel, or who makes the only woman who ever will display a shocking violence? Uh, not quite. It's they met in a party, so since she's been dragged there by some friends. Oh. Uh, they couldn't have been more different, and as you know, they were drawn to each other, she made fun of his taste in music, and he in her major, woman studies. Uh, they were married within two months. A bit soon if you can trust someone, don't you think? It's so sweet. It's so sweet. Exactly. I learned a lot about love from them, if you know. If you know, you know. Some people don't need years to get acquainted with someone. Love could spark from look across the campfire. Now you've got your attention. Each killer is furiously attempting to catch her across the fire pit. It's quite alarming, actually. Except for Trickster, who has headphones in, in and is playing, loudly playing music to drown you out. Okay, that was not a very good story. I don't mean to insult you, but it was actually quite bad. Sorry, but this scenario keeps it real. We can just end it. We can't just end it there. So, who, who else would you like to hear a story tonight? We might as well continue our path. Huntress, you seem very good. Let's hear from you. Sure thing! My neck of the woods isn't one for hard my mythology. Mother once told me a story of a young man who was traveling home after the war. Uh, which war? Doesn't matter. I just want some backstory details to paint a picture. I'll paint you a picture if you want. Uh, the man was loved us in other food directions. He stopped to rest for the night underneath a mystic birch tree. That's where we saw the women, naked, being listening in the twilight glow. But I'm invested. They say a haunting melody has made their way downhill towards the inviting lake. Enchanted by the music, the young man followed the, par the parade of beautiful women till they stopped in the clearing near the water. They turned to him and smiled. One woman with long red hair stepped forward and reached for his hand. The others began to play music. Lutes, lutes, tambourines. The melody was intoxicating. The man's feet began to move beneath him. He was dancing, moved by the magical moves of this mysteri these mysterious women. Twilight darkened into the night, and the man grew weary. But when he tried to still his moving feet, he could found out he could not. Help! I cannot stop dancing! He cried to the nearest woman, a slender woman with thin hair. She drew near to him and her features distort into something horrific. She was bloated, an eye hanging for one stuck its skin the color of algae, a harusalka, her true self. You'll never stop dancing! She screamed at him. My sister and I were drowned in this lake by men of your regiment. Consider this your punishment! The men cried out, But if it wasn't me! Someone must pay, the Rusalka said, and her voice filled with bright malice. And so the man danced and danced until his bones broke and his heart gave out the dance of death. 
a silent beat as everyone takes on this macabre bending. But it's not that bad. Sulkas are also fertility goddesses. If a lady had stumbled across them, she would have been blessed with a fruitful wool. And probably some candy for the road. Damn, she, does she really think that's a happy queen? I want what Huntress is having. How is story time? A lot of people like to take pot shots at sequels, but I think every good story deserves a follow-up. When you think it's the end, it's the sequel is almost never ruining us the original. That's why I'm a fan, I'm much more fan of the episodic style of storytelling. Knowing that it's a series can take a lot of pressure off of any individual ins installment and builds a greater sense of community between audience and creator. Tell me, if you could delete any sequel from existence, what would it be? Don't answer that, we actually don't care. We're just here to make sure that the scenes can move on to the next segment of the evening. God forbid Miss Small Talk get in the way of a romantic Twilight moment. Twilight, I'm gonna need you to shut your yak trap. You know that we need to get back to that thing when we do when we're not on screen. Okay, okay, you have fun tonight and try to not think long. End up dead! Why did you say the words when we got level? You know what kind of double entendre you would bring up the end up dead game? The white's basically incapable with you. You're not since the axe. And you do know that all these people are despicable from those with double digit kill counts, right? Well, except for Spirit. She doesn't really belong here. She's strictly a victim, not a perpetrator. I wonder she's pissed. Did I hear someone trash talk these Spirit? Zero me in. What do you say for tough to the hot, take this to the hot tub so I can soak this bottle while it goes, goes with some pillow hot takes? Please, if I've talked of burns or things that are getting lit or getting glazed. It's not that these activities here set me next to the bus be surrounded by figure flames as well. Well, what if we turned and ran away from this place as far as we could, just you and me? On those spindly legs? You'd probably be tired before you go far. If it's running away to some place more secluded, it, looted, they should obviously join me. Have you seen these legs? Pure power. Not that my walk speed reflects my giant stature, but that's because I choose to move slowly for stealth reasons. It's my own choice, and it's completely logical. Why is everyone so obsessed with comparing themselves to each other and creating drama? I'm so all for all that. Don't you get it? Society wants to trick you into fighting with each other so that corporations can swoop in and sell your fake solutions to all your fabricated problems. I'll be singing in the shade and drinking something locally sourced while forming the Republic domain novella printed on recycled paper because I refuse to play their game anymore. It's like she's trying to actively be unappealing as possible. Does it really turn anyone else on or just me? But despite Trapper's insatiable appetite, it seems his attention, along with the attention of everyone else, is still on you for the moment. If you could, I don't know, just pick one of us. Maybe we can all move on with our lives around, you know, some special projects we might have going. You've heard him. Who will be? Who will you head up with an evening activity? I'm just saying you might get a ton of chances to stay around like this before your time on Murderer's Island comes to a close. And no, I'm not satisfied with that name either, but with the stream reality TV day show boom thing happening, it's pretty much all that was TV. Which color will you pick? And yes, we're back to the skinny trickster because of that guy. Huntress? You know, I've had the feeling you picked me. You've got good taste. And I don't say that because I'm considering eating. Huntress looks her lips. She looks at you eyes. You never felt a little piece of meat this much in your life, but what have you got yourself into? Let's go over to the bar. I'm gonna make something into something special. You and Huntress whisk yourselves away to the bar when you find yourself in an arrangement of... Arts and craft supplies? Are those taxidermic tools? Tools? Cool. Cool, cool. Are you freaking out? I'm not. You wonder what's going through Huntress's head. Though she's bubbling enthusiastic, you're always terrified she might snap. Is there something on your mind? She smiles. Drink this! Huntress hands you a seemingly normal tropical food. Tropical cocktail. If one were to drag you into some sort of state in which you could be operated on, these flavors would certainly hide the poison. You look around and consider what else is there to look for besides becoming Huntress's little toy, and the conclusion is... Bombs away! You pound the drink. It's quite nice! I've been thinking about making you a present. A mask! Would you be into that? Uh, yes, of course. I've always admired yours. What would you like? And it can't be a dog, even though I know you'd like them. 
there was this ex. They were related to Dobermans. Like, two. Oh, no. A rabbit mask. One just like yours, please. Well, that's not very creative, is it? Not just as annoyed, but then her face lights up. Oh, wait. Is this brilliant? We can use this as a tactical advantage. Like, there's two of us. We can attack from both sides. Yes, that's exactly what I said. Well, I know what I'm going to be working on tonight. All alone, in my skimpy pajamas. I'm just going to set you. This deserves a celebration. Some old time movie about corny Vikings or surly Russian ice farmers. More drinks! Drinks for all my friends! Oh, whoa, okay, slow down. I didn't have that kind of energy even after today. Let's do something a little bit more relaxing. Huntress, you've got lots of hobbies. Why don't you share something with us that you're passionate about? Something less deadly than throwing axes or chasing survivors, maybe. Just a thought. Making more mess or wait, making matching gloves. No, you little choker. I'm thinking of a different type of making. Making our victims die fast, medium or slow deaths, depending on the mood we're in. It's another round of Be Careful What You Wish For on Murder's Island. Wait, I need your help. Um, Doing something in a different place entirely? You read my mind. Meet you there. I'm talking about mycology. You know, mushrooms. I picked a lot of them familiar which ones make for great soup baits and which ones make you feel super dead. I'll show you two mushrooms. You pick the one that's safe to eat. Okay, that sounds easy enough. This little fella is an old skull cap, and after eating one, if the tyrant doesn't kill you, the liver failure probably will. Next up, this one's very easy. I'm sure you'll know it. Or it's the one that won't result in un almost death if you eat it. Correct! Hey, that's a chanterelle. It sounds fancy and it tastes fancy too, just like a certain someone I know. I bet. No, no, no. Final question Which will make you jump for joy, and which will make you vomit until you die? Aw, oh, Jesus, that's a strength. It's very deadly. Not to be confused with the wish-granting angel, which you might imagine you'll see while you're hallucinating on your death rate of shooting down one of these. That was fun, right? I like flexing a little more than just my biceps for you. Alright, let's see. Tabulating your answers, and Uh, not great. Not all wrong, but it takes one poisonous mushroom to put you down. I guess I'll just need to keep me around so you don't shove anything deadly in your mouth. Hunter slaps her hands giddily. I appreciate you spending time with me tonight. I know the other killers are very alluring in their own way. I mean, it means a lot that you spend time with a forest pumpkin such as myself. Uh, you're no pumpkin. You're a strong, independent woman. Don't demean yourself. Hunter sleeps on you, knife to throat. I'll demean myself if I want to. She's angry, but also turned on. This is pretty hot. We're here! Claudia and Dwight are gathering everyone together on the breach. Typical. Exactly what the voice said. I'm telling you, and I'm being honest, that you're the only one who can hear me. The gang's all together on the volleyball court. It seems only like yesterday you were sitting on the sidelines watching everyone get sweaty. That's because it was? Boy, it feels like it's been here long longer than that, actually. It's so late, the sun's already beginning to rise. Better get this over quickly so that I, uh, you can get some beauty rest. I do not recommend the eternal damnation of perpetual narratorium. Good thing you've used your time well since then. Really getting to the gang, the brain, the mogul, the basket case, the psychotic bunny girl. You know the four types of people. Everyone's gathered on the volleyball court for a new type of game. Pitch your dream date and see who gets who you get to choose. Who's ready for a round robin? How round are we talking? No, not to eat, Huntress. Each teller gets two minutes to tell you about the dream date they have planned for you tomorrow. In no particular, which is a weird thing to mention, right? All this look like the word does matter. Spirit, why don't you go first? Get this thing over and you can go back to reading your book. Stop talking. Hey, Spirit. Figuratively. Figuratively. Damn it, wait, you gotta watch your words with these people. Tomorrow, you'll spit in the face of... God, die, and be reborn anew. Uh, that's it? If you're not intrigued by that, I don't want to be. 
Go drop Kringart with Chopper. Take up mysteries with Wraith. I don't know what those guys do all day. Do you want to least specify which god you'll be speaking the face of? All of them. Okay then, so Hydra tonight if you tend to hang with Spear. Uh, Chopper, without further ado, would you like to make us all uncomfortable by pushing the boundaries of what acceptable, not uh, only in polite society, but within the narrative of the event and larger meta narrative of a dead by daylight dating experience? Sometimes you just gotta say it. Why, yes, thank you, I'd love to. So, you're thinking of picking me? Well, this is your final warning. Pick me and be punished. I mean, rewarded? Tomorrow will suck. Probably. I'm not an easy guy to get along with, I know that. But I can tell you this much. I'm hiding a secret on this island that make fans shit themselves with excitement. If you like Chopper, you're going to love it. If you're not a maggot. Also, everyone, even confident, sexy ladies, and best stay the hell away from my yacht. Sorry. Anyway, wait. Well, uh, I don't know. I just prefer to tell light privately. Um, I don't think that's really gonna have to work with these game mechanics. Well, just whispered it to light. Wraith considers this for a long moment. Too long. Uh, that's fine. Without moving, Wraith lowers his voice to barely an audible whisper. Tomorrow we have to find my bell. And then I can finally tell you about what I've been working on. It's going to be really special. The kind of thing will be really fun. And maybe finally get off this island. And maybe then we can go on a real date. Uh, you done? Is that it? Wraith nods, proud. Great. Huntress, why don't you take it from here? Tomorrow morning, I'm planning a nice atmospheric breakfast on the yacht. Don't worry, Trapper won't know even though it's gone. What was that? Uh, nothing, go away. Then, boy oh boy, I've got an adventure plan. It involves hunting for treasure. Uh, what kind of treasure are we looking for? Guess you'll have to pick me to find out. Let me tell you, it's primo stuff. Now, if you don't mind, I've got to start preparing because it's clearly already that you're going to pick me. And confident, mysterious. I like it. And time's up, everyone. Gosh, you're to dream about these options so you're ready to cheese in the morning. Now go dream up all these swoon worthy options so that you're ready to come up to make a choice that come dawn. Have a swell night. Um, did you two forget to mention something? <laughs> oh gosh, how before you run off to Summer's Paradise, there's one more thing to do. No reality survival dating competition parody will be complete without seeing one of our contestants. Seeing that one of our contestants is all a teeny bit of psychological break. And giving them a little push. Uh, hold up, this has been a survival dating competition parody this entire time and I'm just now finding out about it? Come on, the signs were there, you just didn't read them. Welcome to Murderer's Island. It's now time to eliminate one of the killers. Oof, it's like butchering, but it hurts even worse. You can't kill a killer, but you can break their heart? Don't you dare even try? You mean... That's right. Tomorrow, one of these sexy slicers will not be eligible to take you on the date. Who's it gonna be? Uh, but why? Uh, because it's dramatic? Because it's surprising? Uh, because it's a class of reversal of bait? And it will hurt someone's feelings. Someone dangerous. Who's it gonna be, champ? What's your thought process here? Trapper seems like he might throttle you in your sleep if you eliminate him. That being said, at least you see him coming. Spirit could be anywhere, she floats. And I hear she could disappear. Hard to track. If you get rid of Wafing my Cly, and I love it support men crying and being vulnerable, it seems like you can be an ugly crier. Contra, she might be pretend to be okay with it, but then she'll start seeing you behind every tree. What I'm trying to say is, I don't envy you, boss, so which those pap are you eliminating? Uh, sorry, Trapper, we're gonna have to take your yacht. This is very simple. Trapper, you're scaring the little ship on me. You are eliminated. Uh, that's fair. Honestly, though, I don't care. You suck. But not in a good way. You bore me, you personal... Only... It wouldn't be even fun to kill you. Which I was totally gonna do tomorrow the first chance that I got. So really, this is a win-win for both of us. Still might kill you, though, out of principle for eliminating me. Sleep with both eyes open. Have fun on your day tomorrow. Now that you've broken the heart of someone heartless, you should go get some shut -eye. And don't worry too much about the broken heart you've left behind. Because, of course, they'll be receiving a consolation prize. They might not get to go home with light when this is all over, but they'll never sleep alone again. That's right, we're sending our eliminated player home with... Their almost mostly new trickster body pillow. The next best thing to be the real trickster. 
It may not be able to hug you back, but he definitely will try to stab you. And how do we know? Because I've tried it. That's right, it's Dwight testing. Claudette approved. Also, hi, Aisha. I hope you sleep well tonight. You're my hero for whatever you accomplish. How can you sleep tonight knowing what you've done? No, not because of the guilt. I mean, there's a legit homicidal maniac who hates you so close by. How can you sleep tonight knowing what you'll do tomorrow? I don't know how you do it, but you better go before Dwight and Claudette come back to put you to sleep themselves. You know, so you schedule, schedule, schedule. Wow, what a crazy way to end the day. An elimination I didn't even know it was that kind of game. Let's check in with everyone, even especially with our loser. Everyone deserves a send-off. I can't help it if I have thick arms and legs that go until they stop. I knew we had a connection from the moment I saw them through my mask. You can never be sure what's going in the newcomer's mind, but I like my odds for tomorrow. It's so fun hunting for love and not for food or vengeance for a change. I don't really know what's happening here. I honestly haven't been paying attention. Oh, sorry, I forgot. I'm focusing on other things. It's more important than you. One way or another, I won't be here much longer. I don't handle the rejection well. At least I don't think I do. No one has ever been dumb enough to reject me before. Yeah, the more I think about it, the anger I'm getting. And I'm a giant rage monster, so everyone in this room should be scared now. Turn the camera off. Did I think there was going to be a chance I might get the maid? Yeah, I did. Did I get care if I got a maid? Not even a little. Does the volume of words I spend talking about how much I care if don't care about things that signify a deeper yearning for me to be seen, heard, and validated by those around me? Nah. What? No, you're not part of us. You don't get a confessional. It's cool, man. I'm not part of anything. You feel me? I'm not a cog in anyone's machine. I'm my own machine. This whole thing is pretty cool. Charming love Dutch old school marketing vibes, not gonna lie. I kinda wish I wasn't so busy right now. I'd definitely be down with a reality show style dating competition with survival elements. But I've got my new album, upcoming tour, finalizing the new sneaker line, producing a limited series of my own life, starting a new social media terrible app, and doing these private gigs over on IP Island. My dudes, you gotta come check out. IP Island's dope. It's where the real killers are hanging out. Holy license, no legal drama, the lawyers, take a hike. I'm gonna tell everyone the trickster said about them, don't worry. I'm talking about your favorite established characters from all of our, from all of our pop culture, like you haven't seen on this island. Hell, you probably even can, like, ghost, don't you say it! Look, we'll get you very popular and in demand, but we have a game to get back to and I don't want to get sued. Ghostface. Come on! Whatever, I don't care. I'm the trickster. See you around, you too, narrator. Um, I have a name, you know. You do? Yes! Seriously, did you not pay me enough to deal with you people? Is it my turn? What? No! No, it is not your turn! You're sentient water. How can you ever be sitting in a chair? What's chair? It's that thing you're getting all wet. Now it's gonna smell like mildew. Okay. Let's just get this over with. It's your turn, Ocean. Do your check-in. Check-in. Uh, I was just looking for the bathroom. Bathroom, are you serious? It's down the hall to the left. It's okay. Never mind. Never mind! What does that even mean? No, not you two. This is meant to be the special type for literally every character in this game. It's okay. We don't have to confess anything. We've just been working our asses off for two days straight and wanted to sit down somewhere. This chair is wet. Yeah, I think the ocean just peed on it. How's it possible? You know, I don't care. You two are looking pretty pleased with yourselves. I've got something to give us. Oh, great. What's it going to be? A clue in the second grade? Cheating on an algebra test once? Watching Trapper get eliminated for the first time in this unending spiral staircase of pain that in life that I've even felt a modicum of joy. Every minute that I'm alive is a nightmare. This place, the sun, these sweet sugary drinks, it sounds fun for a long weekend, but for an eternity? The unrelenting rhythm of crashing waves and wailing singles is like a crescendoing song of evil that makes me question the very foundation of the universe. Why am I here? Why are any of us here? What kind of sentient being would do this? 
Please erase me from this existence. Make it so that I was never born. Pull the plug on this experiment and let my soul be free. And please, please get me out of this polo shirt. Okay, let's get you to bed, buddy. I don't want to go to bed. Going to bed means I'll have to eventually. I have to wake up. Yikes, huh? That's a weird way to end. Oh, well, what are you going to do? You're going to let the camera roll long enough? Someone's bound to say something crazy. Yeah, anyway, seems like everyone's had their shot to annoy me tonight, so let's hit the hay and get some rest. Tomorrow is going to be doozy. Soft sunlight warms your skin, nudging you awake. Also, you're using a color crab as a pillow, which is sort of okay with you pull your beach attire and slush water down your face. White and clad approach. Is that the look on their faces of excitement? Terror? You've noticed your stomach flutters with butterflies. Someone's in love. Or you've been infected with zombie butterflies in your sleep. It has happened before. But it's probably the look. It's time! Claudette gestures over to the beach where the Kelly is staying linked by tiki torches. It's a scene very reminiscent of the TV show you used to hate watching with your ex. Suddenly, the message is clear. You're going to declare your affections and killer in front of several other killers. Hey, isn't Trickster supposed to be here? We paid him good money to make some half ass cameos in the show. I'm going to choose as his agent now. But before they walk over to you for your big moment, don't think we have noticed how kind you've been to us, Light. It can't be easy being thrown to a mysterious island for seemingly no reason, surrounded by terrifying killers, trying to manage your most primal impulses. Murder and making out. And you've kept a cool head and treat us, your friendly host, we host a dick, so don't tell anyone to tell you this, but... Claudette and Dwight look around this conspiratorially. This is for you going forward, don't try to go all the way with a killer who isn't into you. Relationships are in two-way streets, and if you don't have a green light in the other direction, you might end up in the friend zone. The friend zone? That doesn't sound so bad. Where do you think you are exactly? Dead Light Vela doesn't do friends, there's killers and survivors, and I'm afraid we can't say more. Okay, so who's into me? Con looking spiritually, spiritually again. Well, I've seen this first flying between you and Huntress. I saw her whittling the figure in the view last night while everyone else was asleep. So, are you ready? Of course you don't be too bad, we're on schedule. You make your way to the three little potties, Claudette and Dristin to the side, hands behind their backs. It's been quite the 48 hours with the clearly sparks in the air, and I'm not just saying about this rusty chainsaw, though I do recommend staying away from those sparks. It's time for our newcomer to confess their love. Wait, I have to do a drum roll for this. No, you don't, but who cares? Who do you choose for your solo date? Can we at least do the flower thing? Dwight, I thought we agreed to keep that between us. No, not that flower thing. The thing where the suitor gets the flower is a symbol for the consistent love and affection. Oh, right, right, I suppose. But no roses, they're such a cliche at this point. Well, that's good because I tried to pick one for us, but I got an ouchie, so I sell for these. Beautiful. You've done good, right? This is a lovely bouquet. I helped wife save some of these for Claudette later. They're a thing, right? You're getting that vibe too. Just me? Sorry, sorry, you've got other things to think about right now. Who do you select to receive these flowers and spend the day with you today? You turn to Hunter, she never looked more appealing. Her captain dress ruffles in the light morning breeze. A single lens in her shoulders like a beachy cartoon princess. She snaps the seagull's neck and steps it under her flow dress, probably save for her lunch. She can't help but he can't help but hunt. Huntress, I choose you. Let's spend the day together and see if we think a future is possible for our love. Me? Really? Huntress throws her hands up in the air like a bear and gallops to you. At first, you think she might sweat you with her gigantic hands and knocks the life out of you. Instead, she scoops you up into a hug and takes your place by your side. And she just stuck her tongue out to the other killer. Sometimes the amateur moves move is the right one. It's sure to be a fun day. We'll just be here, not getting ready to participate, even though survivors may other too. Well, you go off and have a grand old time. Yep, just Claudette and I hanging out. No one can be for our love, wondering if we didn't pass up to end up embroiled in this unrelenting misery. But go! Have a blast. 
Huntress eagerly leads you to the yacht where you begin your romantic day together. You have to admit, just your warm salty air on your skin, the sound of crashing waves, but it's a perfect morning, just you and Huntress. Hey cuties. Ah, the ocean's here too. Did you know I'm teeming with fleshy bacteria and bodies? That pesky ocean always killing the vibe. You turn to Huntress. You're sure okay out here on the ocean? I know you don't like to be out in the open. It's something about being here makes you feel safe. You both sit down at a beautifully set table at the deck of the boat. A widespread mouth-watering breakfast food is arranged in front of you. Can we get you anything? Um, you look a bit pink. I get extremely seasick. And tricks to replace all the island's drama trimming with party drugs, so... Wait, how did they get there? Wouldn't they just on the beach consoling the rejected killers? Are there more than two of them? You motion one of them over. We'll both take this good river. Hold the orange juice. Of course. Hey, can you play this particular song for us to set the mood? You hand away the piece of paper with the song tab right now. A sure thing. I doubt Trapper has it in his vial collection. Soon the haunting melody Huntress's mother's lullaby streams through the yacht's expensive stereo system. The bot rogues boat roses to the rhythm of the song, the eerie melancholy mood's really quite romantic. Breakfast has never been this intimate. You reach out to touch Huntress's hand when suddenly a loud bellow scares you. You knock freshly poured flute of straight vodka into the pristine deck. It's Trapper! He's screaming at us from the beach! Look how tiny he looks from all the way from over out there. Huntress squishes his head between her fingers like a child and giggles. Damn you poof! The chairs you're sitting on are worth more than your lives! Get back here! He's not wrong. Hey, Claudette, take us off fast further. Aye, Captain. Can she drive a boat? Yes, we'll have to find out. Alone again. Nothing but the call of a seagull and the ominous shadow of a creature looking beneath the waves. I have something for you. For me? Huntress reveals a package ripped in a bloody apron. You clap your hands like a kid on birthday. Her playful attitude is ripping up on you. I made the mask you asked for. I almost forgot, but I bet you didn't. This is the whole reason you pursued Huntress, I bet. Definitely to get a mask of your own. No other reason. Here you go. It's perfect. You put it on. It makes your face like a face glove. You gaze at Huntress as the swell of emotion surges through you. One has become to you, rabbits multiplying, even in mass form. Let's go back to my place. She dons her screwdriver. The tension is palpable as you enter the cabin. You can cut it with a hatchet. Give me a day. Stay three of killer jokes. The narrator only has so much mojo. Huntress sits you down on the clutter table in the kitchen. You notice the blitzens that have crept into every look of clean. What poor creature died on this table? Did they suffer? What do you care if they suffered? Get back in the ocean, ocean! Stop, stop backseat ominous and narrating! Stay here! Don't move a muscle or here. I can hear any mammal's tendons creak as they stretch. It's a gift and a curse! I'll be right back. Oh, alone in the cabin. What to do? What to do? Clean up, clean up, everybody, do you share? You have to slip the flock of adorable birds and cute little mice to come sprinting in and help you, but they don't because it says it's a fantasy. This is gritty. This is real. Plus, I'm pretty sure she kills all the adorable birds and cute little mice. So you putter around the room by yourself, organizing hundreds of very trinket collections. Old bottles over here, discard vintage shell parts over there, various keys that don't open anything in particular. Doesn't she have a drawer with all of these? Everyone has a drawer filled like that. Then you lay a blanket down in front of the fireplace for no reason. No reason at all. You're certainly not imagining all the naughty things that can go down in such a blanket. What's that in your strong yet delicate hand? You reach out to her, long stroke her blood matted hair and scratch, scratch up shoulders. I thought we could get warm by the fire. Mm -hmm. She wags a finger at you with a funny, licious smirk on her face. Not so fast. Remember when we talked about how there's more going on here? You nod like a little idiot. Well, now I know there's something up. The other night when you were sleeping like a cute little baby and I saw the other killer's lairs and shiny objects that they've been stealing from me. I think they're connected somehow. Maybe it has to do with the symbol. I tried to go back with but something blocked me from picking any other objects up. Someone or something.
some fiend knows I'm onto them. I think if you try it, it might work. What do you say? Will you help? Hell yeah, I will. The globe trying treasure hunt on level of a Nicholas Cage masterpiece, you can definitely count me in. Let's go, I'll be your guardian angel. You never know when the other killers might pop up. You grab Huntress by the hand, crack the trip over your own feet on your way out the door. It feels good to have a quest. Thrilling. But part of me is just wondering, how quickly can you get through this and impress Huntress? Soon she'll take you into your bounds and you'll swoon. Your childhood crush on Popeye is making more and more sense. Where do you want to start? There are four killers who have stolen hunters. You're not going to get let them get away from it. Which one will you investigate? We can go to the cave, the lighthouse, the cosmic dump, or the stage. There are two ways to get through Trapper's Caves. Due to the whole, you know, trap-based character he's going to, you could be reassured that one of these pathways is filled with traps. You turn to hunters, but you only listen to You're on your own, it seems. I guess you're gonna have to wing it, but you go to lose your shoes. Ah, yes, the forest. Underground. I mean, come on, putting yourself in the ground voluntarily? That's just asking the bird. Dead. Alive. Doesn't matter. The surface is where you belong. Also, there's a, uh, arrow, a bracket. Oops. The light cascading through the leaves of the trees. It casts a hazy glow as you wander in the brush, leaving the cabin behind. But no matter, this is Huntress to move. You think he'll keep you safe, right? Well, you thought wrong. As soon as you take a step up the beaten path, she leans into one of Trapper's bear traps. He swore he'd get you. You hear his maniacal laugh as you bleed out. <laughs> you stepped into one of my bear traps. I swore I'd get you with. I just said that. I've seen a lot of sheriff films, and I can confirm you got you all. Crap, 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 it's fatal. Darn it, Trapper, not again. Well, we gotta try again. We're going through that path. Oh, uh, we have to start all the way there. Well, we're skipping through this part. Give me a minute to, like, breathe. But also, uh, howdy to everyone in chat. Underground, huh? It's in secret. If no one can stop you if they can't see you. That said, no one can rescue you if they can't hear you scream. And nobody will need to waste time burying you alive if you're underground when you're dead, but you're not gonna die, are you? Surely a dim little trunnel must be rife with traps. However, you managed to make your way along, distinctly uncaught by any traps, rusty, bare, or otherwise. I got this. You're doing great! Like, you're not at all afraid? Who? Me? Now, I gotta say, there's some among the nicest, damp, and seemingly abandoned tunnels I've ever wandered through. Look, it even has lights! Inspired by Huntress's bravery, you dig your set deep into some courage of your own, which is good because you're gonna need it if you're gonna head through, a through that very murdery looking passageway ahead. You enter a human shadowy cave, dripping with echoes, and it's definitely not cozy like the cabin you left behind. You wonder, how deep does this pool of shiny water go? Let's get this over with. When your eyes adjust to the darkness, you see Trapper. He leans against the wall of the cave like a detective in an old film noir. I knew you'd come. Trapper, get out of our way or I'll skew you and serve you for lunch. You're wasting your time. You'll never find what you're looking for. Unless what you're looking for is a minigame. What? A minigame? How unexpected. How playful. How about you play it now? Find Huntress's lost shiny thing. You're on the hunt now. Perfect! Not bad. Not bad. You missed completely. You did it! You found my lost shining object! I'm so grateful I could kiss you right now, but I'm pretty sure that Trapper didn't actually leave it. It's still 
in that shadow watching us. Later, Trapper, you thieving little pair. Hey, that's not fair. I'm huge. Come on, let's hurry to the next place. You found Hunterson, and, well, I think it's a regular old pen, but we don't need to find, point out. She's happy, and that's all that matters? Okay, we can go to the lighthouse of the Cosmic Dump on the stage. This place is spooky as heck. Wasn't the beach stunning and beautiful just a moment ago? So you're telling me your precious shiny thing is up there? It's pretty great. Finally, a good chance to activate these quads. You don't get legs like this from standing still. But you already know I love running, jumping, climbing, roughhousing. Mm. Get that damn shiny thing before your measurable horniness melts your brain and turns you out of ears already. Yeah, I called it out. It's obvious to everyone. Just own it. So, shall we? Instead, inside the lighthouse, it's so dark that you can barely see this stuff in front of you. But that's okay, because you've got about 100 stairs to practice getting the hang of this in the dark. However, something about this gloomy place is wearing you out, messing with your otherwise happy horny aura. You can practice the feeling of going down, 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 just going up, 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 higher in the lighthouse. Before you finally arrive at the top. Spirits! You're looking pretty pleased with yourself. Yeah, I'm getting the hang of this whole being dead thing. Totally get fatter the closer you got to the top. That was me, baby. I gotta share the wealth. And by wealth, I mean unending despair. You're probably here for one of your precious sun. Ugh. You're probably here for one of your precious shiny things I've stolen. Yeah, I'll find it. I'll be over here reading if you need me. Let's find a shiny thing, anything to brighten the mood here. Don't miss the treasure. This is not tre treasure missed. dedication to me. You know I know this, right? I can see a raccoon lick itself from 200 yards away in pitch darkness. I definitely see you licking, working you that little butt off for me. Shiny thing yet. You got a bottle? Really? This is the fancy team? Whatever, you're a real team player. Hey. No. Stop. Spear doesn't look from her book. I think it'll be fun to just peace out. We got the dump and the stage. Dump next. When you arrive at Reed's oddball hangout zone, you immediately understand why they call it the Cosmic Dump. Maybe me and Hobbs. As if there are many items and elements from all of the universe in the space, it also it's a damn mess. But it's undoubtedly a special place. The very amazing Reed makes you think part of something much, much larger. I'm going to hunt some lunch while you find the object. You'll know when you see it because it's extremely shiny. How long are you staying there? Are we even really there? I don't have time for your existential crisis today, Raid. Hunters and I are totally gonna get it on soon. I think. I hope. Look, I need to find a special object you can here. You stole it from Hunters and she knows it. So you're trying to figure out this whole thing out too, huh? Come check this out. A bit of a subject change, but sure, it's what we're doing, though. Raid leads you to a telescope that you can see a far bottom in the distance. Holy smokes, is that... Sorry, I actually have no idea what that is. Would you mind filming me? It's IP Island. Where all the coolest killers from intellectual properties that we're legally obliged not to mention my name hang up a party with Hollywood celebs and Silicon Valley moguls. It's not even all. Zoom in. Over there. Is that Ghostface? I said not to name them! Oh jeez, now I'm gonna have to clear the rights. You have no idea how much my lawyer charges by the hour. I'm sorry, he just kind of popped out. I'm telling you, something crazy is going on here. I have you know I wasn't trying to steal anything from Huntress. I was just looking for answers, but um, occasionally losing some answers. Yeah, that's right. The thing you're looking for, I can actually find, so... Uh, good luck, I guess? Oh good, minigame! Haven't seen one of those in the past 10 seconds.
Not bad. Perfect! You see an old pair of glasses on the ground, quickly grab them. You found it! So shiny! I knew I could count on you! And that's saying something because I literally never learned to count by any traditional system of numbers. Let's get out of here! It's hard to believe that these old glasses are really need anything special, but a lady like Huntress deserves whatever she wants. You spend a moment imagining Huntress with glasses, but she wears them over the mask of her under. Hmm. Hey, that's not just some junk, those are my reading glasses! I surround the highlights. Uh, I don't really have a scary movie in particular. I don't really watch a lot of scary movies, on all honesty. There's only one thing left is uh, Trickster Stage. You arrive at Trickster Stage, but no one's here. Not Trickster, not an audience, not anybody. Nothing eerier than an empty concert value venue. Think of all the fringe that once swayed here, the beers that splashed over in red solo cups. Mosh pits, tall guys standing in front of you for the entire show, lifelong friendships that actually lasted for one summer. Good times. My concerts are always an experience. You should really come to one of my after parties sometimes. They're a real screen. I'll put you on the VIP list. I prefer acoustic ballet like music. Trickster, I never listened to your music, and I think sampling the sounds of people's screams has been very been there, done that. Hey, no one talks to Trickster like that. And how do you know about my samples? Something's obviously a much bigger fan than they're letting on. Show me where Hunter's is turning mysterious object is or wipe that grin off your face with a chlorophyll drenched rag. Way too harsh, man. Way too harsh, man. Mellow. Deranged violence and torture is only cool when I do it because it's my commentary on the shallow society, and I make it look sexy as hell. Your thing of jig is that way. Trickster backs away from me and resumes practicing an intricate dance routine. The way you step to that bootleg backstreet boy just now was wow. If I weren't so strong and stable on my feet, I'd swoon, but it just wouldn't be believable. Find my shiny thing, champion. Oops. Perfect. Not bad. You did it! Your ability to find the unfindable is un quite uncanny. A natural hunter, I must say. You think I might be able to find your heart? I would hope so. It's very important to look in all the internal organs of your prey as soon as you fell them so the meat don't spoil. Oh, what's this? You found a gold coin. That was fun, and scary. Good to see the other killers are taking their heartbreaking stride, more or less. And you got a really nice tour from the island's lesser known haunt. Ha! Boom, still got it. We make a pretty good team, you and I. What can I say? I appreciate a fine collection. Now that yours is back in order, maybe we head inside to appreciate it. And you collect a certain other special gift I mean to give you. A special gift? Is it shiny? I suppose it could be. If you oil it up enough. I'm going to be ill. When you enter the cabin, it's dark, barely lit. Deep shadows stretching from wall to wall. Sometimes it may just be a little bit terrifying, but also a little romantic. But you barely even notice. You've managed to get other things in your mind. Oh! You're practically undressing each other as you walk through the door. Minds elsewhere, neither of you realize the door was wide open already. You are incredible! Every time you found one of the objects, my heart beats faster and faster. Your nimble hands. Is there anything you can't find? The fireplace is crackling. Your heart's pounding. The smell of cinnamon's in the air. But wait. Who is that? Huntress quickly pulls her, her beach cover back on. My darling! An older Russian woman bearing striking resemblance to Huntress sits, warming her hands by the fire. She turns to you and you're shocked to see that she appears to come from a completely different time in history, wrapped in old unfamiliar clothes that are completely out of place here at this beach retreat. Without thinking, you blurt out. Who is this? And why did I that to my vocabulary? This item's really doing things for me. You don't know who I am. Why might you expected my elk wounds would carry over to my... The gods have smiled upon me and cleaned me up. 
She must be in a decent mood, ignoring the fact that she's dropping ox bombs all over the place. Huntress chuckles nervously. Hi, Mama! Claudette and Dwight person like they're in a prank bit. Bet you weren't expecting this to include meeting her mom. What? Hey, Huntress, how do you feel about your deal with Mama coming to interrupt your date? Huntress throws a jerk. <laughs> you still want the truth about the word they quickly scare you away. Good girl. Huntress turns to me. I hope this is all right. Of course it's okay. I give great pain. Huntress breathes a sigh of relief. It's just not the move I thought we were coming back to, but I'm here now, a minute, ready to meet your mama. Thank goodness, because my mom's the only person, <laughs> I mean, my most important person in my life. We rush into the tea, did you know that? Mama Huntress has a cup of tea in your hand. As you drink your tea with her, the air becomes warmer, and you, Huntress, and her mother sit by the fire and exchange stories and anecdotes. Mama pulls out some old time pictures of young Huntress in black and white, holding bloodied animal corpses with chilling eyed dead stare. You all laugh and eat raw meat of some kind. It's a lovely time. Almost like you're back home. You've forgotten that you're on a proudly cursed island on top of some sort of hell mouth. Look, that's not official lore. I just call it like a Every so often, Mama Hunter just clutches her stomach and her eyes stare in the middle distance. She mutters some sounds as she was re uh, reliving the moment as she was skewered by an elf. It's very grim. I like you. For indulging me in your routines, so tell me, what are your intentions with my dad? That means bunny, but you guessed it already, didn't you? Or by now you've got translator out right. All that's on my mind is family. To for forge our own forest dwelling with a brood of half dozen at least hunting by side by side forever. Mama Hunter smiles at you. She reaches into her bloody cloak and pulls out a handkerchief with a flower on it. Thank you. The one worthy of my honor. Use it to clean your hatchet with Sarah. You take the handkerchief. It's soft and smells of spices. I'll take good care of this. You point to Huntress. Her, on the other hand, she can take care of herself. Huntress is ecstatic. You won over Mama. No easy task. My time on this plane is coming to an end. The weird magic from that ghost girl of Black Lighthouse won't keep me here for long. I don't want to get to the logic of this, but yeah, the Black Lighthouse can bring that ghost to life. If you're still here, you're willing to believe anything. It was Spirit who brought you back? I'll have to thank her! Huntress's mom begins to fade. Huntress cries. You can cheer see picture her at six years old, lying over her mother's dead body. I'm keeping my good eye on you. If you break my heart, I will send Baba Yaga after you. You try to chuckle good-naturedly, but you should be really afraid. Baba Yaga is no joke. We play shuffleboard every third Thursday, and she's absolutely ferocious on the court. Bye! Safe journey home to the realm of the spirits! Mama Huntress fades away, leaving you and Huntress alone again. Not a second later, Claudette and Drop fight stump. Never alone, never alone for too long on this island. It's time for a dramatic scene between the lovers. Shall we adjourn to the forest for clean um, clearing for ambiance? You and Huntress started holding hands in the forest clearing. Dwight and Claudette watched your interactions too closely. Hey, I've really loved hanging out with you. I think. I think it's time. Time? I'm for- oh my. Okay, okay, I'm ready for this. Time for you to call me my real name. Like, will you call me Anna? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I think I- and you're a beautiful person, Anna. Do you know what I'd like to do right now? Beneath the moonlight? I'm feeling closer to you than ever before, and there's something I'd rather do right now, then. Does she think- Nope, she's looking at Dwight and Claudette. Chop up these two fools with you! We're not denying her. I, I'm sorry, Dwight. I'm sorry, Claudette. We're gonna have to do it. My hatchet is as sharp as my left for you. Let's get bloody. It's a gruesome scene as you watch these who just wanted to help you guys out. We were being forced to help you! Ah, can't hear you, hon. I'll count congealing blood in your mouth. Ah! Once you make quite a you and Huntress look down with manic eyes. Shall we? Be, I'd love to get out of it into something a little less there. But you never ask. Once inside the cabin, Huntress slips off her captain, revealing every curve of her muscle bod. You follow her lead, disrobing her for the first time since you waking. Yeah, you've been sleeping in your clothes. No judgment. It's a strange new place. 
you kiss, and yes, if you were wondering, it looks like she's gonna keep the bunny mask on for the sexy time. This is the part where I skid out of. Decapitation, sure. Tiger mongs? Love it. Dudes crushing other dudes with car crushers? Gotta have it. But hanky panky? That I can't handle. I'll leave you boring kids to it. Ah, je ne mar. Kiss this boo. What? Just because Hunter speaks Russian doesn't mean I do. It's ca I speak Canadian French. It's a thing. Look it up. Am I nervously running my mouth just to give you some time alone in the dark? Maybe. Stop me if you've heard this one. A hillbilly, a doctor, and a clown walk into a bar. Fine, we'll get back to it. Post doing it, you and Hul Huntress light together and went to the fire. Everything's so perfect. You imagine Mama Hunter smiling down at you from the gun. Then you realize it's pretty gross to imagine her having watched all of that, and you try to stop thinking about it. That was incredible. You're telling me. The door to the cabin creaks open. You cover yourself with a blanket. Oh god, it's severed. Cl claws its way through the doorway, leaving a trail of blood in its way. No, we walked right to the scene for a horror film. As soon as people sex, they die. Not when I'm around. I'm just curious they hatch it out of nowhere. Is that in bed with you guys? The wriggling torsos of White and Claudette fall. They're chopped up slowly to pieces and start to put themselves back to no way. What the fuck indeed, my friend. If you thought this island would let us die permanently, haven't you ever played Dead by Daylight? Come on, we have to get to the final scene. I need decision. Claudette and Dwight leave you and Huntress back to the empty beach. You both bask in the glory of being freshly laid. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? Like some sort of laundry detergent, freshly laid. Actually, maybe that'll get good. I'll get my agents to start circulating that. The island is strangely quiet. No sarcastic remarks disguising a broken young woman from spirit. No strange wide-eyed <laughs> socially awkward waif. No threats of imminent voice violence from Trapper. Even Claudette and Twy are tight-lipped. They almost seemed zombified. Last day, you beautiful piece of beat. You've done so well. We're almost at the finish line. You didn't think I'd brought you all this way without a plan. What kind of sinister body of salt water do you think I am? A whoosh of dark energy surrounds you and disappears as quickly as it came. The unnoised begin to turn, turn, return. Birds chirp in their trees, the grass rustles in the light breeze, and oh look, the other killers are all here fire pit to watch the finale ceremony. I can't wait any longer. The pomp and circumstance is agonizing. You're telling me. Stick to the script, Claudette. Okay, so, Huntress, how do you feel about the newcomer? Are they everything your murderous little heart has ever longed for? Huntress stares you down for an agonizing moment. She steps towards you. My dear, I think this is true love. Come with me to the Red Forest. Let's hunt the woods together and have a family bursting with babies. We're some as fierce warriors who can defend that family at home. In just a matter of days, you've gone from completely alone to being the star of a clan of warriors. I did not see that coming. Rafe starts a slow clap. No one joins in. Typical. Whatever. Love is a concept made by the green card industry. I'm out of here. Spirit floats back to her black lighthouse. Look behind you! It's Trapper! Huntress, you best me. He turns to you and offer his leathery hand for a handshake. Congratulations! I don't sing hands with losers. Trapper's eyebrows shoot up. And then he smiles. Not see that one coming. You're alright, kid. I mean, I hate you completely. I want to kill you mercilessly, but you're alright. But wait, you haven't said anything to Huntress. And I love you too. Yes, let's move to the Red Force me. Is 12 kids too many? Maybe in this count, but who cares? Your heart's overflowing with joy as you and Huntress embrace. Is this what you've been missing your whole life? A woman with shoulders the size of mountains who won't take her off her body mass during her intimate times? Yes, yes, a thousand times yes! You stare into the sunset and picture your life together. Happiness is real. Huntress lifts her mess and you finally lay eyes on her beautiful well, natural to beauty. But you know, the cabin I grew up doesn't have the amenities that my new country's beach house has. I'm used to living as a beast, bathing in the river, running wild through the bushes. While telling you this, Huntress has left her bathing suit behind and entered into the jungle. You haven't lived into the one like beach. Ah! You, ch you chase Huntress into the woods, leaving your own bathing suit behind. And that's, uh, the end of, uh, well, that's one ending. We still got, like, a couple of other endings. Can we skip the credits? Okay, good. We can skip the credits. Uh, 
But yeah, we've actually now completed uh, at least one ending. I don't know if I'll... I probably might try to do the other three. Uh... Sorry, I'm just getting a little sniffly here. Dang. Like, we still got the other three colors to go through, so I think that's actually a really lucky, lucky thing. Yeah, I honestly surprised that I was able to attract the crazy uh, ones, I guess. <laughs> but, oh gosh, I'm actually having a bit of, like, con in congestion. I hate that. So, uh, that was actually pretty fun. Oh, I lost... I just actually had to look over how many frames I lost on uh, OBS, and I'm like, dang, I lost, like, 250 frames. I I'm also trying to... Uh, set up things so that way they're like set at 1080p for uh because for when i upload things to youtube number one it's been up at max 720 so i'm trying to get them to be 1080 as well and which is why i had to like reset obs to be like uh able to do that i don't know if it's gonna be like i'm just hoping it doesn't like become this constant but yeah that's actually the first of four uh you know uh, endings in uh, Hooked on You. And yeah, I will try to pace myself with her. Smasher, not... Not... Yeah, definitely. Uh, Anna's gonna be pretty much a uh, careful to handle. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um... That's gonna be it for more, uh... That's gonna be it for this particular Hooked on You stuff. We'll try to get the other three, uh... Teller's endings as well. But... Oh my god, guys. You guys are a riot. Like, this has actually been great to, like, uh, take after a quick break from, uh, other stuff. But, uh, we will be continuing on Thursday with another stream. It won't be, uh, Hukum. It will be another game that's new. If you follow my Twitter, uh, you'll actually know that the next uh, thing that we're gonna play is, uh, Final Fantasy III, uh, the Pixel Remaster. And, uh, that's been fun, because I've been kind of playing it off-stream a little bit. Well on personal time but yeah anyways that's gonna actually be it uh this will probably be uh posted later uh or tomorrow but thank you guys for uh tuning in and yeah final fantasy 3 is gonna be pretty fun because of all the different job stuff uh so yeah please uh look forward to final fantasy 3 on thursday uh either at uh two or at seven like tonight so thank you guys for tuning in this is life brawler and i'm hoping that you're all having a fantastic evening